I wouldn't, I, don't, I wouldn't imagine. Who's calling it casting? <laughs> it just sounds like you're a wizard. Or you're fishing. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much more nerd am I? <laughs> sounds like you're a wizard. No, it sounds like you're fishing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Pens and Pixels Popcast. I'm your host, Cal G. And to my left is the coordinator extraordinator. Mike Kent. The Popcast is the place to come to if you want to hear about the art and news of video games, comics, and movies that week. And pop culture. Pop culture, you say. I mean, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, we don't really have to get into this too much, but Naruto is having a live-action Hollywood movie. Is that pop culture? Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about Rob Kardashian uh, breaking up with Black China? No. 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 Of course you don't. No Neither do wants, I. No one wants to know about that. No, no, no. We're here to bring you all the nerdy news you need to know about. Um, and as usual, that's what we're going to be doing first, the newsy news. And then, after the break, which will probably be a shorter second segment, we're just going to go over the future of the podcast. Um, we're gonna kind of toss some ideas out there. Yeah. And if you guys like that, uh, you, uh, we want you to we want you to tweet at us. We uh, at the Calgi at Mike Kent draws at Pens and Pixels or email us uh, at meetpensandpixels at gmail dot com and tell us what you think of these ideas. If you want to see them, if you want us just to not do that, continue the podcast, or you want you know we want to see something different completely from us. Yeah. Just let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we want to get a little uh, fan interaction, community building. And there's enough of you now that I expect a response. <laughs> he expects a response. <laughs> Very dad-like of you. Uh, Mike, do you have any uh, pens and pixels housekeeping? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good boss. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> I'm in Christmas mode. Uh, only thing to say is that uh, anybody in the Ottawa, Toronto, or Montreal region is to check out uh, the schools and workshop that's happening here in Ottawa uh, at Algonquin College. Uh, it's uh, running February 4th, and we have Ryan Lang, uh, concept artist from Big Hero 6, Moana, Doctor Strange, um, and then the ever-popular Nathan Fox uh, from, yeah, God, you name it, uh, Prince of Egypt, um, no, his list is extensive. He's been around forever. Um, they're both coming to do uh, uh, workshop classes with us, and uh, the tickets are live right now. You can check out the Facebook page for Pens and Pixels for links to the tickets. I think if you just follow, uh, you know, www.algonquincollege.ticketfly.com, I think. Check the Facebook um, page. For yeah, the exact I was gonna say you probably just Google uh, "schoolism Algonquin" and it'll come up, right? Probably. So. Um, but you can buy tickets, they're 45 bucks. it covers the whole day, that's actually cheaper than your usual schoolism event, and uh, yeah, come out and join us. Uh, the money from the event will go to uh, actually the arts programs at Algonquin to create funds for the students and those interested in pursuing arts education at Algonquin, so, you know, if your money's going to someplace, good. Yeah, it's not just going to us, <laughs> we're not just going to sit on it and buy dominoes. Oh, $14,000 worth of dominoes. That'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You're just thinking about the boxes. Yeah, how many pieces do you think that would buy? How much is a single Domino's? Oh, I don't know, like 13 bucks. I can't do that math, so. No. If you can, tweet us at. <laughs> no, fuck off. Alright. <laughs> On to the newsy news. Alright. You tell our audience to fuck off a lot. <laughs> I do it, I do it in, with love. love. With, with jest. Um, Alright, okay. Country droll. I know I brought up the Naruto movie, but first I want to talk about. The Baruto anime. <laughs> okay, so well, you, you need, Mike has informed me that Baruto is a real character. Yeah, as Naruto's son. Yeah, so the series ended. Yes, right? I was aware of this. Okay, and when the series ended, the story literally wrapped up everything. Yeah, but they decided to cover what happens far, far into the future, and Naruto becomes Hokage, like he always dreamed of, um, and he's married to Hinata, and he has a son, Baruto. Um, <laughs> I know. The name, it sounds like a joke name. It, it sounds sound like, like something you see as like a college humor I skit. I thought it was a fan fiction book or something. Yeah, I that's what it sounds I was like, this can't be real. And it, was. it sounds like someone who like knew what they were talking about but wanted to talk down about Naruto and say, oh, that fucking Baruto character. Or it was like they didn't understand how the alphabet works so they didn't go with like A, B, they're like A, B, B. Yeah, good yeah. enough. <laughs> we, we did it. Um, um, so is this, a, is this cool? Is this exciting? Are so, you, because no. you, you're a Naruto fan. Well, I was or you a, were. I was. I was a fan for the first half of it. And then well, they made a movie of Bruto. Uh, the last oh. uh, Naruto movie it was a full-length uh, movie. Interesting. Um, and, eh, like, yeah, take not it great. or leave it. I, I, I hated the character. The, the child, I was like, fuck your kid. Like, you made a horrible son. Um, <laughs> I like your daughter a bit more, actually. And, 
other than that, like, I was like, okay, you brought back monsters, basically, that were the same, whatever, I didn't give a shit. Mm. And it was just basically, like, them saying, like, Naruto successfully did his future. Mike, I don't watch a lot of anime movies, mm -hmm. um, based on series, but when I do, I always find that they're terrible. They're terrible. Yeah. Is that always the case? No. I, can I can't think of one right now, but I know that there are some that I have seen that are so not So, I've terrible. only watched, there are, like, 14 Dragon Ball movies. Literally, like, three of them are good. And I for think they're good. Uh, I think Broly's pretty good. Well, Broly is good, yeah. And I think uh, one of the newest ones, Battle of the Gods, was pretty good. Yeah, no clue. And uh, I don't know, one of them in there, Tree of Life. I have no idea. One yeah. of them, one of one Tree of them was of good. Life. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then I watched the Hunter Hunter movies, and I didn't like either of those. Did I watch the second one with you? We didn't. Really no, do that. I don't think so. It was about the dark gee or she or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, Gone had like a dark energy in him, and then he did something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the second one. What was the first one? I don't remember. There's another one. Oh. Yeah, it's so unmemorable. I don't even fucking. Okay. Yeah, I know the, the dark T one. But it's, I, so for those ones, I knew that they were made by not. It was the manga creator had nothing to do with it. It was just the animation studio being like, "We're gonna make our own original story," and it was just garbage. Like nothing cool. That's the thing. I, I feel like with movies, since they're non-canon anyways, just go nuts. Have Krillin freeze with Tien and have a buck fuck Bulma and then they have a baby and they fuse with a dragon and you're like, ah shit, that's a Krillin dragon, we gotta fight it. Or like, whatever, right? Like, you could do anything and they do like the most mundane shit all the time. Fire Broly. Stop. <laughs> it's so dumb. But that's, that's the shonen uh, recipe, right? Yeah. That's the point. It's supposed to be the... Like, every one of them is always like, oh, there's this threat that no one knew existed and will never know existed. And, you know, now it's shown up and it's obviously 7,000 times stronger than everyone. But then apparently that doesn't matter because it just requires, like, a slight power. It, up it requires end. friendship for power. Yeah. Okay. So, next up, there's going to be a Naruto live-action Hollywood movie uh, produced by Lionsgate. Hollywood. Yeah. Lionsgate. Jeez. Yeah, like a North American... Naruto adaptation. So we talked about this in a previous podcast, and I think this is where it could work if they literally just take one really small portion of the arc, and I mean, it's a tiny ass portion. It mm -hmm. covered maybe fifteen episodes, sure, and it's just literally the start, just episode one, episode fourteen, mm -hmm. the whole hidden Miss Ninja thing. That little fourteen episode stint was what got me hooked to the series. I was like, "What is this show?" You know, and then. Everything after that just started trailing into being stuff that I didn't care about. But if they just gave us that little perfect chunk, it mm. would make a great movie. Interesting. Okay. So, I don't really... New Road doesn't seem like it translate to live action to me too well from what I've seen of it. Uh, Dragon Ball Evolution obviously didn't translate to screen well. It'll be interesting. Um, that being said, we're getting Ghost in the Shell soon. Ghost in the Shell looks, if nothing else, like it's going to be visually great. Yes. Um, who knows if they're going to you know, do justice to the story. But do you think Ghost in the Shell could usher in, like, a new era of, like, good anime adaptations? If it's good, then yes. Like, you know, like, wouldn't that be crazy? Well, we've been waiting, well, well like, I mean, we can give a straight example, right? Bad superhero movies doesn't usher in the superhero genre. Uh, good superhero movie comes along, and now, uh, you know... Other everything movies, is superhero. Everything is superhero. Everything else is like, hey, a thing that's not superhero. People are, like, <laughs> pointing it out more that more often than going, yeah. like, look, a superhero movie, isn't that crazy? It's now just everything else. And we're waiting for gaming to do that. Apparently Assassin's Creed won't accomplish this. <laughs> this is like Hollywood giving up on gaming. They're like, ah, oh, fuck, we just can't do it. Yeah. We just can't do it. Yeah, it's like Assassin's Creed is, uh, not, uh, have you heard anything about it? I heard, well, it has 20% on Tomatoes. Like, it's not doing yeah. well. Uh, it's definitely not what's going to launch the video game movie franchise. No. Last of Us would have been it. Probably. Um, yeah. So, with anime, though, uh... We, we were waiting. We were like Everyone said Okira was going to be the one, then Ghost in the Shell was going to be the one, and they came up with different titles. Now Ghost in the Shell is the only one so far actually made. Yeah, Akira is still like development hell as far as yeah, I know. Okay. We have the Death Note Netflix adaptation coming. That's right. That that would be neat, because the thing is, is, the cool thing about anime is that it has so many giant genre changes, right? Like some of them are just slice of life and or just like a mystery. Yeah. You know, no superpowers, no nothing, just a really, really cool story or something just slightly Japanese different about it. Yeah. It's got some sort of neat little twist, right? Totally doable on a Netflix TV budget. Totally doable. So I would think that'd be cool to turn those into that. And then, yeah, like, you know, for our big budget stuff, you pull out your Akira's, your Ghost in the Shell's, your uh, fucking, I don't know, Spirit Away. Yeah. Which would end up just being a CG movie. It would have to be, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It'd be almost so, it would be to the point where you're like, why is Beauty and the Beast a live action movie when yeah. everything is animated? But 
Yeah. Spirited yeah. Away would be the same thing. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, you have one little girl. Like Lion King. It would be like Jungle Book, right? Like, yeah. it would be like one little, real little girl running yeah. around with an entire CG world. And, and then, like, um, fucking uh, Lion King, and they're just like, it's our live action Lion King. There's no people. You can't. You can't call it live action. No. Even if you shot the whole thing in the actual African Sahara Desert, and like, or whatever, or Savannah, and then just had, like, CG lions running across it. Like, still not live action. There's yeah. no nothing happening. It would just be a lot of people holding cameras on blank scenes. Picture the lions running across. Oh, shit. I agree. Sorry, I was getting rid of a news story. <laughs> I just didn't think it fit in. Okay, um, so we're going we're gonna to gear up on the fucking superhero news here. Oh. Spider-Man Homecoming dropped a trailer uh, quite a while ago at this point. I know we're a little bit late. Uh, this is December 8th. It's now December 22nd. So I apologize for the lateness on the commentary of this, but... Mike, what did you think of the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer? So, you and I, uh, originally, originally, I'm still on this fence, uh, were worried about this movie. Yeah, so my, my relationship with this movie has been a little bit uh, turbulent. Yeah. You know, uh, Spider-Man came out in Civil War. I just want to jump in real quick. It, clearly, the no punching thing was not true, because he punches people in the first two scenes. Oh, that's, you're, that's right. You're yeah. very true. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. What the fuck was the director talking about? That was literally from he the literally director. punches someone. It wasn't even a rumor. It was, like, literally from the director. He grabs someone's fist and then punches them in the face with his own fist. That's, like, a double punch. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Civil War Spider-Man came out. They nailed him. He was great in that movie. Mm. Totally fantastic. Was stoked to see a new Spider-Man movie after this. Mm-hmm. And then, like, as the news has been, has been slowly trickling out about this movie, as it's in production right now... Uh, they've just been like saying a, a couple things here and there. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. Like no punching. Like it was like weird shit where you're like, ah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's like, why like are John- you following the old '90s trope that everyone hated? Yeah, it's, it's just like odd shit, right? So we, my my hype was going down, and I saw this trailer, and like my hype is back up. Not too like I think it looks good, but Mike, Mike, how about you? How about you? Uh, I'm still you worried. Fill me, in, fill me in here. I'm still worried just that. It's not that it looks bad. I, I think it looks great. I think he's great as a Spider-Man. I think like the Spider-Man parts of it, awesome. Um, I think the argument that some people are bitching about, saying that like they've made Miles Morales white, basically, because he has the exact same friend that Miles Morales has, the, mm. the, the chunky uh, Hispanic boy, um, and all that kind of jazz. Like the story seems very much more of the Miles Morales, mm. you know. Uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker's story was all of his, about him being alone and dealing with having this great power. Mm. Miles Morales' story was different. He had friends and groups of people around him and stuff, right? This is more of that story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, I get why you see the comparisons. I think it's just a merger of the two. And yeah, there was... They... Peter Parker will sell before Miles Morales. I, no one knows who that is. Yeah, that's I true. told Jed that there was another Spider-Man. He's like, who? Yeah. So he died? What? You know, like, no one's gonna know that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, like... You're not, you're not wrong. Um, what I'm worried about this movie becoming is... Adults don't understand me. And, <laughs> you know, because like, there was that whole thing like, they treat me like a kid. You are a kid. And it's like, you know, it's this whole like thing about he's going to have to like prove himself that he's a real Spider-Man. Yeah, like the fucking Ultimate Spider-Man TV show where he's like, I'm a real superhero too. I could be part of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Um, you know. I thought some of the two parts were humorous. I thought some people were like a little too harsh on the... Uh, like, oh, it's going to be the Tony Stark and Spider-Man show, and, like, it's going to be... I get be... that, though. I am worried about that. I'm not worried about that at all. I think those parts would be great in that movie. I, I think it's only I bet because... we saw all three times that was going to happen. After all... That'll be longer, but... Yeah. After all that fucking bitching about, uh, uh, from fucking Robert Downey Jr. going, like, oh, I gotta be in all the movies, and he's like, I'm taking over half of the fucking cover of Civil War. Well, I get it's between the two of them, and he's supposed to be involved. He's like, I'm in these movies. It's not Captain America. It's not anything. It's me. It's not the Cap show. Yeah. Like, it always feels like it's, like, you know, Tony or, or Robert, Robert Downey Jr. trying to throw himself into every one of these movies. Um, but all that being said, uh, yeah, I'm not, like, upset about it. I am slightly worried that maybe there'll be too much focus on that. Um, that didn't worry me at all. In fact, I thought that was, like, some of the best parts of the trailer, <laughs> personally. Um He's, he's holding together the, the big boat, you know? That's cool. I like that a lot. That was cool. Um, what did you think about Vulture? Vulture's not going to be the Vulture we know from the comics. No. Obviously. Um, he, they're obviously going with a way different interpretation of him. Uh, Is this closer to, like, the Ultimate no. ultimate Vulture or anything? No. I don't even know what Ultimate Vulture People was. People said, that, like, his, like, all this technology and stuff is probably... Because, like, they, the weird gun that the robbers are using in the beginning and yeah. stuff like that, it's all Jatari technology. Yeah, so, yeah. I saw people saying that. Uh, 
uh, and stuff like that. So, like, that's kind of neat. I think the design's cool. The When he turned around, he has, like, the fur and, like, the little green loops. And the wings worked, and, you know, like, I was actually fine with the design. Again, it's just a dude that flies, so I'm still not concerned. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. Like, I, I don't know what Spider-Man would be worried about. And he's like, I'm going to come and kill your family. And he's like, I would hear you coming with your jet wings, <laughs> like, a mile before you ever showed up, so. I also have Spider-Sense. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm just, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm worried about it being, the, like, a, the, the theme of the story of getting hit home too hard about, like, I'm just a kid, and no yeah. one, no one, I'm just a kid. I was just, like, I think what got me was, I really liked the original idea where they said, with, like, Spider-Man Homecoming, with the title Homecoming, and giving it that kind of 80s flair with the title, and they were talking about it being, like, a Breakfast Club. John Hughes movie, yeah. John Hughes movie. I wanted, and then there's touches of that in this trailer. Absolutely. And, I mean, a trailer doesn't dictate the tone of a movie. I just No, that's it. what I'm, that's, that's, again, I think this is a good trailer, I'm, yeah. but I'm still, yeah. I want more of that world, you know? Um... I would even take a Spider-Man movie with less of him swinging around the city doing stuff and more of him just being a high school student. Yeah. Know? And just being, like, with his powers and, like, you know, just doing simple things, right? I also saw people, talk, like, <laughs> saying, like, he's telling, he's told someone who he is. He didn't tell them. Like, he got found out or whatever. But uh, I always thought that was, like, in the in the previous Spider-Man movies, the, the ones with Andrew Garfield, he told Gwen Stacy that he was Spider-Man. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. If I was Spider-Man, I'd fucking tell someone. Yeah. Not everybody, but I would definitely tell someone. And he does tell Gwen Stacy. Yeah. 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 Uh, and people are mad about that. People are mad. <laughs> I don't know. Like, why would he give away a secret identity? I was like, because. So, uh, the other thing that was kind of neat is that if you put it together from watching the trailer, that uh, Donald Glover is uh, possibly actually the Shocker. Oh, you think so? Well, because the first Shocker that shows up, he's just wearing like a kind of manhandled, half-made uh, outfit. Right? Yeah, and he had the yellow jacket, right? Um, yeah, well, that, that's the thing. He had a yellow jacket, right? And it was like a different set. But then the one that punched the bus, mm -hmm. right, was a different suit. No yellow jacket, no nothing. It was just the arm guards and stuff like that. And it was like a mm -hmm. test thing. And then the last Shocker you see where Donald Glover's standing next to him, uh, it's, it's Donald sitting there uh, and maybe... Uh, some people because of the, 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 the Tinkerer that's it yeah Tinkerer yeah, is another character another actor right yeah so it's not him so he might be putting this on other people mm -hmm. and then having him test it and then he will be the last wasn't Donald Glover supposed to be the teacher too or is that what, no, did, was this well, speculation from us that was probably speculation okay for some reason I thought when Donald Glover, we, Donald Glover was cast we thought it was a teacher he still looks like a 16 year old <laughs> Yeah, if I, went, I thought we thought he was a teacher for some reason. I was I was honestly just picturing him being like, Peter's too smart. He's punching like the bus. <laughs> he's gonna take my job soon. Like he's just like he's just upset. <laughs> gifted children, fucking gifted children. All right, Spider Man looks okay. Still tentative about it. I'm um, humble. I want it to be great. Honestly, like I want a good Spider Man movie. Yeah, you know, be nice to have one of those. Well, the new character, the new setup, everything about it seems to be leaning itself in that direction. Spider-Man won't return in Avengers Infinity War. Earlier this week, it was confirmed that Avengers Infinity War will start production on January 23rd, 2017. Let's go back and just put that into English. Spider-Man will not appear in... What did I say? I just read this. Yeah. Spider-Man won't... No, you, yeah. you said it with no breaks. It was like one word. Spider-Man won't return in Avengers... <laughs> Spider-Man's not coming to uh, Avengers Infinity War. Movingcastingcall.org recently put out a casting call seeking extras, stand-ins, and photo doubles for starring actors. While many casting calls including plot details, this one does not, although there's quite an extensive cast list which confirms essentially all the major MCU characters will be present, except for Spider-Man. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, although it clearly gives a story right there that he doesn't get to join the Avengers by the end of the movie. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't really think, yeah, I guess I didn't really think about that. Yeah. Although I just kind of assumed he would be in it. But uh, we, we reported on something before where Tom Holland said, like, it's up in the air and blah, 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 and we don't know. I don't think it was going to be in it. It seemed, like, it's, Spider-Man's inclusion in all this seemed too late, because I'm sure the script for Infinity War was already done by the yeah. time they were even, you know. Plus, the, the deal that Marvel and Fox have right now with uh, Spider-Man. Marvel and, and Sony. Marvel and Sony, sorry. Uh, have right now is probably tenuous at best. It's like cameo appearances and little drop of characters and the amount of screen time. So I... Putting Spider-Man... Sony property into a Marvel property mm -hmm. as a permanent character in the Avengers. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, they might not want to let that happen. Yeah, thing. especially since he'll end up having to be in every other movie after that. I wonder... What does Sony get, get out of this deal? I feel... Because like, Disney gets all the merchandising shit, mm -hmm. and they get to control how the character looks on screen. Mm -hmm. Sony has to pay for the production, and they get the return on the movie. 
Yeah. That's basically it. It almost seems like not worth it if you're not getting the merchandising. You know what I mean? They get uh, the, uh, the 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 what, 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 fucking spread like the the news, right? That's they're, true. They're no longer you know like oh Sony, right? Uh, so it's like, oh, Sony. Yeah. You made a good Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, you guys okay. like you you did good work. You worked with the right people. You're making the right decisions. Um as much as the, you know, I like the Spider Man who's good in Civil War, I feel like Infinity War is probably already gonna be like super packed. Super packed. Like and they did a good balancing job in Civil War, I thought, of with a lot of characters. Have you watched it? I just realized that like a vision had its time, but if did you watch the, if you rewatch the um airport scene, yeah. he disappears twice. Oh yeah. He's like, not there a lot. <laughs> no, but like they didn't do anything to him. He just flies up, right? And then suddenly everyone else is tied in the battle and Vision's just standing up there and it's just like... Because they were like, none of these guys can touch him. Yeah. He's flying. <laughs> yeah, he needs to be... <laughs> when you have a character that powerful with everyone else, you need to be like, all right, we, we, everything's fast enough, they won't notice. Like he doesn't show up at all until he comes in later on and he just like stands in the way of something slightly and then like, like reflects it. Yeah. And then he disappears again. No one hits him with anything. Nope. And then he just laser beams a, a, like a line. It's like at that point, you're like, dude, you, you could have easily just like... What were you doing the whole time? Like done any... You could have done anything. Maybe he was just could... longingly looking at Scarlet Witch the entire time. He could have picked up a rock and just flung it real fast and it probably would have dropped like Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> just pierces through him. Ah! <laughs> right through his throat. <laughs> like, oh, good. We don't have to boy Jeremy He's got Renner kids. anymore. He's got kids. <laughs> They're orphans now. Plus, I we don't have to employ Jeremy Renner anymore. Oh, he's good. I like his wife. I will take them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new family. That's how they incorporate Vision's family. Yeah. That'd be fucking fantastic. <laughs> All right. Deadpool director Tim Miller addresses his departure from the sequel. Don't believe what you read. Okay, Tim Miller. What do you got to say? <laughs> what do you got to say? Uh, if you don't know already, there have been a lot of uh, rumors and speculation over the departure of Tim fighting. Miller. Lots of fighting. Yeah, it seemed like there was... Fighting, uh, there was those tweets from Ryan Reynolds, there was just, uh, I mean, and he, he's always said, we left on good terms, but, like, you don't say, me and Reynolds were in a fucking fist fight in the men's bathroom, and, you know, or, like, whatever happened, right, so. <laughs> That'd be so bad, like, you go into the men's bathroom, and looks over, it's like, fuck that guy, he's good looking, he's funny, he's married to a beautiful woman, he looks down. It's like a huge dick. Like, <laughs> fucking ass. <laughs> you can't have everything! <laughs> I was like, fucking. Not allowed to be everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said, I just want to say one thing to the geek audience out there, because it's important to me what the geeks and nerds of the world think, because they're my brothers and sisters. I don't want to make some stylized movie that was three times the budget. If you read the internet, who cares, really? But for those of you that do, I wanted to make the same kind of movie that we made before, because I think that's the right move to, movie to make for the character. So don't believe what you read on the internet. I wanted to do the same thing as the first movie. Kyle Chandler was not going to be Cable. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, there, we there go. you go. <laughs> Hot scoops, everybody. Uh, all that stuff I read kind of kills me. Um, blah, blah, blah. Perhaps it was really just a case of creative differences, especially as Reynolds had previously said that there were some very, very difficult times on set and some scary fights in the production process. Interesting. Hmm. Miller had nothing but good things to say about the experiment experience and his recent place replacement. Even when some people go, the movie was really hard to make. The movie was a joy to make, but I think that's what you see on screen. We all had such a good time. Okay, but this is just fluff about him saying how good his previous job was. Yeah, and how much he hopes the new one's going to be great. Yeah. Um, I think he just didn't... He thought... I, I thought that was a good chance of that happening. I mean, most of the staff had left because what they worked on before was a passion project based on not having any money. Yep. And now they have money, which means once the money's in there, the companies have a say, which means the movie will change. Basically, what I can get from this is that the next movie's going to suck. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't. But it's gonna be a, like a, a like a fucking paid for movie. That's and that's the thing. It's like it's like a co- like and again, it hasn't happened yet. But like, it's a very company thing to do. Where like they let they basically just let creators create for that first movie. They gave them a small budget. And we're like, do whatever you want in that corner. We don't care. Yeah, you know, and then it turned out to be amazing. It made it a ton of money. And they're like, time to meddle. You know, yeah. like they're like, like yeah. why don't you just let the same thing happen again? Yeah, like let the magic, let the lightning strike twice in the bottle. You know what I mean? Like. But could that even happen? Because, like, the next time it happens, they're like, all right, you guys can just go and do whatever. They're not going to be like, all right, you guys can go and do whatever, but you don't have a budget. They're going to be like, all right, you guys can go and do whatever, but you have a budget. The people involved now have more money available. So, like, when you're working on a project, like, even free for a graphic design project, like, someone comes along and they're like, my budget's $2,000, right? And you're like, all right, well, we can do this for you in $2,000. When mm-hmm. they come back later and they're like, all right, seven. I've got seven now for your, my new whole CMS website, blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? 
it's at that point where suddenly they come in and they're like, oh, but now we have the money. I want this and I want this and I want this. And you're like, okay, so now it's just this horrible monstrosity that lives on the internet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Flashing fucking gifts, and gifts and rainbow <laughs> shit and glitter sparkles. Yeah. It's like a MySpace page on and, X98. And a, like a fucking blog. Can the logo be bigger? <laughs> A blog that no one updates. Can the logo? Can the page just be the logo? <laughs> I don't think people know it's my brand. Is it my brand? They don't know it's my brand. Fuck. <laughs> a content management system for something that has four pages. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Also true. Can we have a blog that will never update? Yeah. We'll update it once on the launch day and then never again for three years. I wanted to link to all our social media that has ten followers and never updates. <laughs> yes. Exactly that. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was a good summary. No, nothing needs more. But that's that's, what, said. that's what Deadpool is going to turn into. It's going to be yeah. like, you know, hey, by the way, like it's, I want to do CG. Okay, but I want explosions too. And well, fucking whatever. it's interesting to me because Deadpool has been on so many fucking different adventures that like there are a ton of bigger budget stories that I think you could tell it still be good. I don't think Deadpool necessarily needs to be small. It's why it's weird that he thinks that. You know what I mean? No, I think. Take Deadpool and the stories they're going to tell out of the equation and think about just literally on a production side about making a movie. The moment you bring money into that movie, you start getting into that issue where big budget effects, is it going to become an FX show instead of a movie about the mm. character? Is it going to be focused in on the humor that Ryan Reynolds can bring? How many writers are they going to suddenly start to hire because they're like, oh, I don't want to have to write 20 pages tonight, so I'm going to hire four writers. That's some big wig is fucking sitting in, just, just fucking smoke a cigar. <laughs> He Deadpool made us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what show's real funny? Two Broke Girls. I really love Two Broke Girls. Uh, <laughs> can we get the, the, the funny one on there? The, the way you... Can it be? Can can that be your sidekick and Ryan Reynolds is just in, the, in there like he's just like has no say anymore. He's like, yes. He's just neutered completely. Like <laughs> <laughs> He's just, like, just like, sitting there and then someone comes over and just like starts dumping money. But more money. <laughs> I, more yes, fine, yes. Okay, so all the writers from Two Broke Girls can be the script writers for this one. You stay completely away from the script. You're the pretty boy. You're the star. I'm gonna make you a star. <laughs> I already am a star. <laughs> I I think I'm on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well, I'm gonna take you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put you back on. You're the biggest star. I'm gonna put you under the fucking ground. If you don't like it, the Two Broke Girls. Mike, you brought this to my attention. Mm. Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant just added an unexpected and hilarious star. <laughs> Mr. James Franco! Fuck. What? Okay, now... The backstory for this, which was funnier, is that when I texted this to, uh, to uh, Cal, was, I think, two weeks before that, we made a whole bit about how funny it would be if James Franco was in, like, Predator or Alien, and then suddenly it became true. And this is not the first time this happened. We keep making these jokes, and then suddenly they come true, and we're like... No, it was a joke. Well, that like, shouldn't have happened. Like we made it up as a joke because it was ludicrous. That was a thing that doesn't happen. <laughs> and yet here we are, a universe in which James Franco is in an alien movie. Yeah, it's like Donald Trump president James Franco. <laughs> James Franco in Alien, and also maybe Predator. Yeah, is he going to be like the through line? What's happening? <laughs> what is fucking? Ha okay, so look, James Franco, obviously not a bad actor by any means. No, he's done good... He's done, you know, he doesn't serious work before, if this and is going to be a serious at, movie. He's good in those movies. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's James just Franco's randomly weird. where, like, he'll, like, be, like, come out and be like, I'm Oscar-worthy, and everyone's like, oh, and you should host the Oscars and shit. And then he's, like, suddenly painting nude pictures of Seth Rogen, and you're like, okay. Yeah, he's doing that shit, or he's doing Pineapple Express, which is just, like, a sonar comedy movie, yeah. and you're like, oh, okay, right. like, this is... Or fucking whatever the Korean was, was and the jokes are all about right, right. stank yeah. dick and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I forgot what it was called. It was a controversial one, though. They couldn't release, right? What the fuck was that called? It's not important. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But James Frank was kind of a weird actor like that. He kind of just does whatever he wants, which is respectable. He's like, yeah, I want to be in a good movie. And then he's like, ah, I want to be in a ter terrible comedy. And you're like, all right. Um, well, I mean, it means he chooses his projects. And he is a kooky, weird person, you know, like, yeah. as a human being. I'm sure he's a very interesting conversation. But well, and I know uh, Seth Rogen is like a actually a huge nerd. Like he was heavily involved in what's that fucking show, Sandman. No. Well, give me premise. Give me Sandman. Context. No, the, the Neil Gaiman. Isn't that what's called? There's a show for Sandman. There's no show for Sandman. What's the other one? Neil Gaiman did it though, isn't it? Gaiman. Um... You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> no. There's that comic. There's an Al Moore comic. Fuck. It's on TV. We talked about it before, and you were like, were you watching it? I was like, no. And you're like, yeah, neither am I. <laughs> like, That's probably why I don't know it. Shit, wasn't it? 
Tell me not to think of Sandman. I mean, not. No, Sandman is, is supposed to be a movie, and even then that's barely happening. Shit. <laughs> All my nerd cred's gone. Anyways, Seth Rogen's a huge nerd, involved in some huge nerd comic thing. He's been, he's, yes, Seth Rogen uh, is a huge nerd. Be so, like, and he's good friends with James Franco. Me, James Franco's a huge nerd, loves Alien, wants to be an alien, wants to be Xenomorph. <laughs> we got a little James Franco head coming out of that mouth. <laughs> you know? You know what's funny is I'm trying to come up with some sort of, like, stereotypical line that James Franco would do as that, but there's nothing. James Franco's just the fucking same. odd. But different, but still same. <laughs> that's what he does. Um, I think that's actually a line from the movie we can't remember. Um, and I mean, remember this guy, Danny McBride? Danny McBride's also in this movie. He's also in, like, stuff with James Franco. But, uh, the, yes, uh, what? Oh. Yeah, yeah, we reported that a long time ago. That was, like, one of the first casting announcements they had. They were like, Danny McBride. I forgot, I was just... Yeah, yeah understandably. <laughs> God, this... But, movie. like, this dude, Danny McBride, looks to me like a space trucker. Yes. Doesn't he? Yeah, like I can totally see him like lighting up a cigar and being like. I'm yeah, but I don't see that. He, I've never seen him do that, which doesn't mean he can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have some amount of faith in Ridley Scott. <laughs> Silence is all that needs to be said here. Yeah, I, I, no, like fuck. Um, it, it's just the weird cast, and then this like his whole I'm fucking like. Uh, uh, what is it? Not, not a, it's not always a horror, but like a hardcore horror. Like it's going to be. It's going to be dripping in gore, gore and blood and, blood and, and yeah. scares, and it's going to be scarier than the first one, and you know, like all this other shit. And so it's going to it's going to reinvent the alien and make it more horrifying. Uh, and uh, even though like the pictures of they're like the new alien, and I'm like it, it's the same alien. Yeah, you didn't fuck with the design too much, no. which honestly is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. It's HR Geiger. Um, but, uh, like, all of that shit, and all the weird changes that have happened, because this movie is nothing close to what they originally announced when they did the, um, Alien, the second premiere. It, yeah, this this whole project seems like it's been a little rocky from the get-go, you know what I mean? It, it, it's literally How many title changes did it go through? Four, three. Three, I think? Yeah. Like, there was three, there was an in-production one, yeah. and then Alien's Paradise, and then now Alien Covenant. In Paradise Lost, and then Alien's Covenant. Yeah, so. Yeah. Again, fingers crossed, hope, that, hope that'll be good. They pushed the, the date up, so, I mean, I, I feel like that shows some amount of faith in it. Or they just want to get it out earlier, get it over with. I think they want to like get rip it out of band aid. I think Ridley Scott's got other projects to get tied into. You but know? how is like how is James Franco getting cast if the movie's already done? Or is it like it was it like a secret reveal? It wasn't you know. It's probably a secret reveal. I doubt they're shooting shit with him now. All of a sudden, out of the dark, I just want the two of them to be like horrible fodder. I want them to be like just standing at the front door, like and they're like splitting a joint or something like that. And they're like. <laughs> Right. What if it was <laughs> something like a five minute scene of just these aliens slowly descending. <laughs> <laughs> you hear Seth Rogen's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we had, that was one of my favorite text conversations ever was with you. And we said that Seth Rogen uh, got like an alien in him and it came out that was like a Seth Rogen alien. Yeah, a little, it had, like a little fro on the end of his like <laughs> <He's> dickhead like... <laughs> thing. <laughs> just open his mouth instead of the screech that you normally yeah. associate with aliens. It's like, like the nice, like I said, like a whole swarm of them is like running across the, the, the <laughs> going after them and stuff, but. <laughs> And then it's, it's, like, horrifying, but then there's just this one in the back that keeps, like, ramming in the walls and falling over. <laughs> it's a little shit. chubby. Like... It's a little chubby, and it just doesn't get, <laughs> quite, quite function right. <laughs> and it's just, like, laughing. The other alien, the other James Franco alien, just, like, cracks its skull open and makes a bong out of its head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bong shape, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 had an official teaser trailer. Which was uh, great. Yeah, that looked cool. Um, you don't, you're not, did you watch the first Blade Runner? No. No? Okay, that's fine, you're not the only one. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not, not into the, uh, I'm not, not, I'm not into it, I just don't have no idea what it is. Yeah. I know that Harrison Ford is maybe a cyborg. Quick, quick premise of the whole thing is that Harrison Ford is a, a, a I'm not going to come up with terms, he's a hunter for replicants, replicants are humanoid androids that are right. completely yeah, yeah. indistinguishable Heard that name before. from humans, except for by like this eye exam, mm. um, and they also have a permanent expiry date, like they'll be around for five years or twenty years or whatever, right, like they, they die at a, like Are they a, made it a like, squishy? They're, no, they're, yeah, they're, they're flesh. Like they they're bleed. human. They're so bleed. you cut someone's arm off, you can be able to tell. Yeah, like, no, like it. there's no way. Like there's, there's almost no way to tell that they're an artificially created human, and not a human. Like they're like a robot at the end. Of the, but they're human. Um, they feel and everything like mm. that. But they they will die. They'll rapidly age over the, the span, and they die at this time every single time. Right. Yeah. Um, and Harrison Ford goes around and kills these things whenever they they're, when they're supposed to die. They're supposed to go turn themselves in and get like shut down. Oh, okay. Um, but then some of them don't want that, and then they run around. He's got to go shoot the rogue ones who like malfunction or don't do that. That sounds stuff. really cool, actually. Yeah, and uh, there's this whole group of them that in the movie that go around trying to find a way to uh, like get away and like find out if they can live longer and stuff like that, and find out how they get past the expiry date hmm. and all this stuff. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, that's basically the story. There's a lot more, obviously. There's sure, the sure. whole thing with Harrison Actually, Ford's I might watch that now. Um, it's a good movie. It's slow, but it's a good movie. No, I know. It's one, it's one of those, like, classic nerd things that it's I just have no... It's what all sci-fi concept art has been based on is that movie. Yeah, like, it's one of those things I just have no, like, you know... Yeah. I know it's, like, big nerd thing that I should know about. Uh, Considering your love for, like, the 80s, 90s, like, you know, like... Total Recall! Yeah, it's totally along the same thing. Ooh! Yeah. I mean, Total Recall's way more tongue-in-cheek and goofy. This is serious, hardcore sci-fi. I've watched Total on... Recall, like, 13 times. Yeah. In the last... Five years, yeah, probably. Yeah, same here. Totally. Um, so that's Blade Runner, and now they're releasing the second one, which, again, I'm not going to hit on what this means, but it was a great little twist and connection to the next one. It's obviously a direct sequel, and I'm super excited. Plus, uh, Denise Villeneuve is the name of the act, of the director. Yeah, Denise Villeneuve. Um, Denise Villeneuve. Denise Villeneuve. Yeah, uh, that he, name. He's an excellent director. He just did Arrival. Which, um, if you listen to our movies podcast, Best Of... Uh, we both loved Arrival. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, and he's set to do uh, Blade Runner. Or he is doing, or he has done Blade Runner. Yeah, he's actively doing it, or it's done already, I yeah. guess, so. Yeah. And which, next up. Yeah, which leads he's in, to. He's in talks to direct the Dune reboot. Is it just talks? It says in talks to direct the Dune reboot. Which is amazing. Which is probably, I mean, this guy seems like he's shaping up to be a really good sci-fi director. It, the hardcore sci-fi, though. So, like, I've talked about it before. It was, like, sci-fi, there's, there's like, sci-fi in the way that, that um, superhero movies are sci-fi, you know? Guns yeah. Of the Galaxy. Science fiction, technically. Right? Yeah, yeah, science fiction at the end of the day. But the hardcore sci-fi is The Arrival, right? Mm. Or Looper. Uh, the ones that, like, you're like, what's going on in my head? Even Interstellar. Inter- yeah, Interstellar. That's an interesting. Yeah, no, no, Interstellar is hard sci-fi. Um, and, uh, fucking... Anyways, there's tons of them, but that's the ones that make you stop and think, and you're like, whoa, right? Yeah. Um, Not just, like, a talking raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just because it's it's science and it's fiction, you know? Doesn't always mean it's sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, but Denise Villeneuve is uh, a very, like, think, a very think uh, thinking director, and he likes this kind of stuff, and the movies he's done have really clearly... Uh, played out, and the fact that he's done the arrival, which is a wonderful think piece of a sci-fi film, and if he gets, uh, because basically, if you tie together the two great sci-fi stories ever, because Blade Runner is based on a book, do uh, Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, yeah, um, and then Dune is based on the book Dune, yeah, the two greatest stories in sci-fi, pretty much out there, like they sit as pillars together in the sci-fi world. Uh, to have him, if he pulls off Blade Runner correctly, to do Dune. Which I personally love more than uh, do Android's The Dream of uh, Electric Sheep. Um, like I, I can't even imagine what that movie's going to be because I'm uh, about waiting. two or three episodes ago. If you want to look for it, uh, it has uh, the giant worm, sandworm on the cover art of the podcast. Yeah, me and me and uh, Mike talked about uh, what Dune is, what I think Dune is, and that is how we started talking about weaponized Pinocchios. <laughs> it went right into that conversation. So that was great. It's going to be amazing, and I think he's the perfect director. I pray that he becomes the right one, because he's proved himself over and over again. Yeah, and he did Sicario, which is another great movie. Yeah, like, I mean, it's like when it comes down to the tone of Dune, he's It's, the it's guy. always interesting when you get these, like, directors who are just knocking it out of the park constantly, you know? Like, yeah, J.J. Abrams, um, the Russo brothers. Uh, yeah, like, just, like, their first movies. Like, they just... Yeah. Instant hits, you know? Or, like, no, I don't know, I don't know how well right with it, like, financially, but critically, you know, obviously, they did very well. Um, well, they're all financial successes at the end of the day. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay, Aquaman. Patrick Wilson trains as for battle Ocean Master. That was words. I got dyslexic in the middle of that. <laughs> Patrick Wilson is the man from The Conjuring and Insidious and Stretch. Yeah. And he often works with James Wan. Yes, he's the actor. Yeah. Um, great actor. Great guy. Always oh, really yeah, like yeah, him. Yeah, Super yeah. charming. He almost reminds me of like a poor man's Will Arnett. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's more attractive at least. Sure. Yeah. Um... And uh, he just uh, he was in oh he's in season two of Fargo and he was excellent in that too. Uh, Patrick I Wilson, watch that. Fargo's really good, really really good. Yeah. I, I don't really know what's your kind of it's like crimey and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. they even like crime stuff. No no no, I hate the crime of the week stuff. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fargo's excellent. Um, anyways, Pat- Patrick Wilson's gonna be Ocean Master. Ocean Master, weirdo character. Look at his fucking face. Why is it? Do you know who Ocean Master is? Yeah yeah. Like yeah, like he's the bro- like half brother to Aquaman, one of the main villain. Yeah, but look at his thing. fucking look at his face. That's a great helmet thing. Yeah, that's I want to see Patrick Wilson had. in that. I wanted to have him have the original one with like the pink fins that came off from the nose. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. 
I'm just happy Patrick Wilson is getting, like, a big break and he's going to be in, like, a big movie. Because, like, he's in stuff, but he's never really, like, risen and been, like, a true star. What I really like about this is, like, from his portrayal of um, different characters in different movies, but, like, even looking at the owl from uh, Watchmen and a few other things. Right, he's in that cat. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, but, like, he's played characters before where he snaps halfway through and he becomes the bad guy. Mm. And when he dies, you're like, this dude's fucking He's crazy. intimidating. Like, he really intimidating. Even in Insidious Chapter 2 is not a very good horror movie, but he he's possessed and he's trying to be the demon. Yeah, he's trick, Like, tricking the, the family for all good of it. And he kind of does have a snap moment. And you're like, holy fuck, you're yeah. actually t- scary. Yeah. yeah. He has a good way of, like, act, like, in his acting skills, the bubbling up anger thing. And that's key to this character, right? Like, he gets jealous of Iron Man, or Iron Man, fucking Aquaman. Um, Ocean Master is known for being jealous of Iron Man. <laughs> he imagine? He's, like, underwater, and then Tony Stark shows up. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> he doesn't even have to try to swim. He's just jetpacking through the fucking... <laughs> Bing! I am NASA. <laughs> underwater NASA. Uh, yeah, Ocean Master... Uh, I thought we already had the villain that wasn't Ocean Master, though, for Aquaman. Am I wrong? Black Manta, you thought it was? Yeah, didn't we have... No, there was a rumor that Black Manta was going to be the main, the main bad guy. So do you think but maybe Black Manta will be, like, not Black Manta in this film? Black Manta is almost always, almost always a, um, uh, what is it called? Um, not a subordinate, but, like... Second in command. Second in command, and, like, the, like, you know, the, the one just... That, that little henchman that's always, like, his right-hand man guy. Yeah. Black Manta is almost always that character on every team. Yeah, you know, except well, for in fucking uh, Young Justice, where he actually he's the, yeah, he's like an actual villain in that yeah, one. Even though he only has a helmet that shoots lasers. Um, <laughs> I love Black Manta's head design thing; it's so cool. <laughs> but uh, Ocean Master is great, a great character, really interesting. Uh, if you did, you watch the Aquaman animated movie? movie? Yes. Yeah, like. Yeah, great. And I like the I like what they did with Ocean Master in that. I hope that translates into what he's going to be. And this actor is perfect for that. Yeah, I hope they pull from that. I. James Wan's a good director. I really hope Aquaman turns out to be good. There's so many good things going for Considering it. Considering like, how smart his decisions were, like going like when he was like, get, you get to choose the hard one or the one that you get creative freedom. He's yeah. like, creative freedom. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, um, and then like when everything else happens with this movie, he's like, no, it's not, I'm not tying this in the shit. Like this is my movie. Like, yeah. It's just like very much about isolating it and making it good in the way that they did that with Wonder Woman. Um, yeah. Like... I think that's what's going to make it good. Is that the directors who take over these films currently that are already on the slate before Jeff Johns got his hands into everything mm-hmm. and going like, all right, fuck the DCU. I'm just going to make a good superhero movie. Those are going to be the good ones. And James Wan is doing... How crazy that. would it be if... Let's say let's say Wonder Woman isn't great either. Like, is Aquaman going to be like the first like great it DC so movie? Good. I mean... Wouldn't that be fucked? It was so good. It'd be so good, because... It'd be like Aquaman finally like, getting his due. Yeah, like 65, <laughs> 70 years of him being like made fun of and like, you know, just like floating around yeah, in the water. Yeah, you talk to fish. Like, you know, like, his powers being dumb, and then he shows up, and it's just like, it takes Jason Momoa and James Wan to make him, like, badass. Yeah. To, to the mass public. We've always loved Aquaman. But... Yeah, that would that would actually be, like, the greatest irony. Yeah. If everyone surrounding him sucked, and then Aquaman was, like, the great movie. Yeah, and then the good character, too, like, the Justice League movie comes out, and the only character anyone likes watching is Aquaman. Yeah. Fuck, that would be funny. Yeah. But, we already know that Wonder Woman's gonna be awesome. In a bad movie, she was the best thing. Yeah, I mean, I still think, yeah, Wonder Woman looks good, as far as, like, we can tell. Yeah. So. Oh, All this right. is bad news. <laughs> look, 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 look. I want to hear your perspective on how you think this is a good thing. Let's let's be look. I'm the optimistic one. <laughs> okay, so this news story before, before we start arguing about it, David Ayer, the director of Suicide Squad, and Margot Robbie reteam for an all female DC villains movie, Gotham City Sirens. So we knew this movie was coming. Yeah, we reported on this a while ago. Yeah. The Margot Robbie was trying to pull push for a female DC movie, we, and she got yeah, she it. She wanted like they were going to do Harley Quinn, and then she wanted to do the Sirens. And... Yeah. It became the sirens because everyone liked that idea, um, and then so David Ayer is going to be uh, the director. The ass who did Suicide look, Squad. look, I David Ayer still made a good movie before Suicide Squad, which was the fu- that fucking Shia LaBeouf one. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. <laughs> there, there was nothing redeeming. You didn't know the title, and the actor was Shia LaBeouf. Like, how do you make a good movie with that <laughs> recipe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to, I want to say something really stupid. It's uh, Fury. I was gonna say Hurt. <laughs> That's not what it was. What is yeah. Fury? Fury is Brad Pitt and Shia LaBeouf. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, that was actually good. Yeah, okay, so yeah, th- that's why they picked David Ayer. I think David Ayer 
got the short end of the stick from everything we've read about Suicide Squad. He was thrust into a script that he didn't really get to a write. A lot of plunging stuff. Yeah, like he was. Like just, he just got tied up in his trailer. Like, so you're the director, and they just tied him up, bent him over, and were ramming things into him for the entire. Not, movie. Well, they were just throwing half done pages at him. He's like, "What the fuck, the Joker? Like, why is he a Mexican gangster? I don't know." How to... And they're just like, "Yeah, here we got this. Is what we got?" Like, so just throwing pages at him. Like, it sounded like the you know the movie started filming. The script wasn't done yet. He had just you know, and he had to start his job. Like, I think he got the short end of the stick here. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he made a good movie. Suicide Squad was not a good movie, but I feel like he has one in him. In contrast to these directors who've been popping up and going like, hey, by the way, I can do almost no wrong. There's been lots of them who do that one really good movie, and then suddenly it's just like, oh, that was a fluke. Sure, absolutely. Um, I don't want to throw Josh Trank under the bus here, but uh, Josh Trank directed Chronicle. Awesome movie. Mm. Josh Trank then went on to do Fantastic Four. (laughs) Maybe not his fault, really hard to say. There was a lot of fucking shit going on with that movie, too, but... Uh, good way to you, destroy that could, you could totally be absolutely right. Uh, a good way to destroy a promising career. You do Chronicle, and you're like, holy shit, and then suddenly... You do Fantastic Four, like one of the worst superhero movies of all time. And, God, can you imagine how much that would ruin his career? He was, like, on this bullet up, and it just went... Beep! He was. He was going to direct the next Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. He was the one... I think he was the one supposed to do Rogue One. I think so. You know, maybe whatever the next spinoff is, maybe he's supposed to do that, but he oh, got dropped from that because of Fantastic Four. He says it's not because of that, but, like, come on. Um, <laughs> he also went, also, he went on to Twitter, like, before, like, the day before Fantastic Four released, and he was, yeah. like, he started bad milking the movie, like, the movie you're gonna see is not the one I wanted you to see, and, like, all this shit happened, yeah, blah, 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 yeah, and he yeah. deleted the tweets and all this shit happened. So, anyways, I want to give David Ayer the benefit of the doubt that maybe if he has time to actually, like, you know, polish the script and work with the actors and get a good story down, like, that this could be a good movie. I don't think he is necessarily the problem. I think upper WB management was the problem of Suicide Squad. Yes, that's a huge problem with all the DC stuff in general, so mm-hmm. I think there's a good chance that he'll make a better movie just if they don't do that. And with Josh, Who's, yeah, who's to say they're not going to do that, but if, I would like to be, Yeah, you know? but if Jeff Johns is in, in the way, and he does his job like uh, Kevin Feige's been doing. Exactly, yeah. this will be a movie that Jeff Johns, from the top down, has his, his hands on to mold and shape and grope. I mean, I'm look. just picturing Jeff Johns groping stuff because he's really pretty. Um, <laughs> Gives it a little squeeze, a little tickle. <laughs> but uh, the other thing too, though, is I guess because Margot Robbie's been identified as Harley Quinn, she has to be Harley Quinn, and there's nothing saying that she can't be a good Harley Quinn mm. um, because it's not fair to judge her on that performance based on everything that happened. I thought she was pretty okay. Like, I thought she was pretty good. She's yeah, not not awful, um, but. I don't know, there's just something about the way that when I watch her in her interviews and she talks about superhero stuff, it's just like it's not, it's not her thing. I feel like she's making it her thing. Like it's not, like, clearly not her passion? She got like... like Jennifer Lawrence. Like, Jennifer Lawrence uh, did a really good job as Mystique for, like, the two movies, and she was great, mm-hmm. but she didn't care about superhero movies that much, mm-hmm. you know? Like, she likes them, She's she would like to be part part of them. She likes to be involved, but she doesn't like that character. She doesn't really care. She's not attached to Mystique or X-Men mm-hmm. or anything like that. And it came across, mm-hmm. right? Like, she always kind of acted like a girl, but not a mutant, not a, a woman who was tormented for the way she looked, right? Because it just, she didn't care about that story so much. It's mm-hmm. clear, right? The actors who get in and they're like, oh my god, I've been reading that since I was a kid. I have to be, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the ones who always take off with it, right? Sure. I don't get that impression. I don't know. I- I'm fair, I've not watched any interviews with her where she's talking about this, but uh, I think she I think she did a decent job, and I think with a better script, she'd do a better job. Um, we also have the rumor going around, hot scoops, that Megan Fox is going to be Poison Ivy. Um, Which is weirdly okay. I think it's totally okay. Uh, I think the decision-making behind it is probably pretty cynical, because mm-hmm. in the comics, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy have a uh, relationship. Mm-hmm. And I probably think that they just want some hot ass that little bit kissing just on the screen. Yeah. Maybe they get some hentai tentacle <laughs> vines in there too. Like, what's going on with that? Do you, just, <laughs> do you just want two two hot ladies to kiss on the screen? Is that what this movie's going to try and sell? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. That's just all it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it turns on in the first person. This is actually just a porno. <laughs> yeah. Just nothing but like lesbian sex the whole time. The bad guy comes in. The same. The same. He's the like, I'm going to destroy the. <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, and you know who will be spouting that, that line? Will Smith! He's hoping to reprise his role of Deadshot in Margot Robbie's Gotham City Sirens. Look, Mar- Will Smith, you, you played Will Smith. You're a good you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. And your Deadshot was you 
with you with guns. That was Will Smith yeah. with guns. No, that's fine. I don't think he did a horrible job, honestly. Like, it's fine. It's weird to me that Will Smith, A, wants to continue associating with DC Universe. Mm. B, is going to continue being this, like, really B-tier character. C, not trying to stay home and restrain his son. <laughs> I, think his son <laughs> I don't think his son's as crazy anymore. I think he stopped. I think it, I think at some point he realized everything he was saying was stupid. No, but isn't it recently when David Blaine went to his house and did magic, he was like, I'm a magician now? You're right. He thinks he's magic. Never yeah. mind. Never mind. He continues to be stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, is that weird to you, though? Will Smith is always like, he wants to be like the, the poster, the star, the, the, the main guy. This is going to be a Gotham City Sirens movie. Like... Yeah, but then are you, he'll are you, pull are you, Tony Stark and he'll be like the guy who pays for everything or something. Yeah, is he going to be, yeah. Or like, is he going to be like the man behind the scenes who who makes the women what they are? That sounds bad. <laughs> it does sound bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, he just, it's weird to me that I, I, I don't think Will Smith knows comics very well. That's not a slight at him, I just don't think no. he does. So does he think Deadshot is like a way bigger character than Deadshot is? <laughs> like he was Deathstroke, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, Deathstroke's a yeah, huge yeah. villain. Deadshot... He's really no accurate. Like yeah. no one knew what you uh, were until they saw that movie. Yeah, I wanted to hit on though is uh, Megan Fox being uh, Poison Ivy. Sure, uh, is the the reason why it's strangely okay is that Poison Ivy is a complex character. There's lots to her and everything mm. like that, and that's fine. But once she becomes Poison Ivy, the attitude is at the end of the day the same thing: a constant seductress and you know, like lots of ooh my pretty, lots of breathy talking. Yeah. And, yeah. Which is Megan Fox, you know. Yeah. Plus, she needs to be stupidly hot. Yeah. And Megan Fox is a pretty girl. Um, and you could dye her hair red. That'd yeah, and then stick her and have her like groan and slime herself or whatever around a bunch of fucking uh, tendrils from a plant. Yeah. You, you've got poison ivy. You like, did. Yeah. But that is actually the right thing to do with. Poison yeah, ivy. I wasn't. I was not offended for, by that choice. For once in the in the entire time, <laughs> you should over sexualize this character because that's what it's about, you know. Yeah. And to do that, you get the girl who you know humped a motorcycle in Transformers is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that shot in Transformers, like, oh. I, I couldn't even appreciate the shot because, like, I was just so like, "Are you really doing this right now?" Like, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even. It was yeah. Megan Fox bent over like, for a good. Yeah. Minute and a half, like yeah. just like, ass, just like ass, ass, yeah. ass, 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 working on a motorcycle like no human would ever move work on a motorcycle. Like it was fucking yeah. bent like, over backwards. Upside it's like down. one of the few things I remember about that movie. Like was she painting it? Wasn't that it or something? Oh, was she? Was she detailing it with an airbrush or something? Yeah, yeah. But like upside down with her ass in the air. Like she was like, yeah, she was like the face down, ass up. Yeah. Let me see what you all about. Okay. Would have been better if she was like in fucking dumpy overalls that were like covered in sweat and paint or something. It would be better. She's basically Cindy from. Uh, but she could still make hot. So Final Fantasy like, Fifteen. Yeah. All right. On to the gaming news. Yeah, you know, Cindy from Final Fantasy Fifteen. That was a little blatant. Mike, sources at Kotaku. Mm-hmm. They know things. <laughs> WB Montreal cancels unannounced Suicide Squad game and shifts to Batman. You said Damian Wayne, Batman. That is, in fact, the case. The next game is a Damian Wayne game, apparently. Um, so we've been hearing more and more about this Damian Wayne game. And we discussed it last time. Uh, so, yeah, on the last actual podcast, not the best ofs, yeah. there was a new story about Damian Wayne, Batman. And that was that was actually uh, Jason Schreier from Kotaku saying that he expected a trailer for this new Batman game to be at the Game Awards. And the Damian Wayne one, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, and whether or not we felt good about that, because still Damian Wayne is not cool yet. So what's yeah? They're DC's been trying to push Damian Wayne for years, and it's just it's I want to say it's not working, but they keep starring him and stuff. I don't know if it's they're like they'll love him eventually. Why are they trying to get rid of Bruce Wayne though? Like, what's the point? I understand that like technically at this point he should be like eighty or whatever. Well, in the Arkham Knight game, no, no spoil, no spoilers, but Batman's not around anymore, probably. So well, even then they hinted that he still was. Sure, but he was like an insane bat person or something. Maybe that's the this game's about. Mm. Uh, okay, so anyways, uh, the bigger story here is that there might have been a canceled Suicide Squad video game. Mm-hmm. We've heard off and on rumors about this for a while, too. Like, a year. What would that game be? I don't know, and I, I kind of almost never thought it was actually true, because I just thought with the upcoming hype for a Suicide Squad movie, that they, people were guessing, there's a Suicide Squad game. That's probably what WB Montreal's working on. It was one of those things where it just, it spiraled out of control and, like, it became, like, yeah. actual news where it was really, like, a rumor some asshole on Twitter started. Hey, me, by the way. 
Um, <laughs> you sure the asshole on Twitter that starts yeah. all the rumors? Um, Follow at Cal G. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what these people are saying. There is indeed a new Batman game in development, and there's a twist. The story takes place in the not-too-distant future. The primary protagonist is actually the original Batman's son. The city will not only be bigger, but it'll actually show signs of Gotham's population more than ever before. Because, you know, in all the other ones, it was like... No, yeah, the city was abandoned. Evacuated oh, or... Constantly abandoned, yeah. Meaning the city has been evacuated, plot thread is being left behind to the wayside, which is smart because my primary concern with the latter Arkham games is just how empty and lifeless the world feels. The story will also not unfold in the span of a single night. It is unknown if the Batmobile will be playable, but it's said we'll have access to the Bat Cycle. As you progress throughout the game, players will have the opportunity to upgrade the Bat Cave. That's, that's cool. cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like getting Bat Cave. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, they need if you go back to your hub and then like you're planning out and there's like yeah. several things happening over the course of days and like yeah. you know Mr. Freeze is planning something over the you know. It's not just one night where you're like, how the fuck are you all doing this? Yeah. Um, and, like, if you're building stuff, you're like, I need a car, and then, like, you know, you gotta put the platform in, and, you know, that kind of shit. Okay, there's a little more information, too. The next game is the Damian Wayne game. It has been it was greenlit last summer. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, and that's, big, that's about the time we were hearing about it, right? Like, that makes sense. We were podcasting last summer. Yep. Uh, ten years in the future, I think ten, I think our future ten years from now, not quite Batman Beyond. Bruce is old and has a beard. Oh, well, there you go, still around. Harness on his leg, uses a walking stick, is mentoring Damian Wayne to be the new Batman. Damian has a bat bike. <laughs> lots of great characters and also new ones. Uh, lots of redesigns like Black Mask being a female. This is like, just, what? Sorry? Hmm. Black Mask is female? Yeah. Lots of great characters and also new ones. Lots of redesigns like Black Mask being a female. Hmm. I really like Black Mask. Me too. I don't want that. I mean, I I know we want more female, blah blah blah, and I agree, yes, but I kind of would want that character left alone. Black Mask in Arkham Origins was Joker. It turned out to be Joker. Was it? Yeah, like he was pulling the strings and whatever. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I mean, there could be a badass woman my, crime boss, you know? No, I know. But one of my favorite favorite comic books um, I ever got was I was uh, during the the really dark night dark runs of uh stories and it was with black mask and um uh what he was doing was he was like running around with these masks and filling them with like uh, corrosive glue mm. and then sticking them on people's faces and it would like melt their face or melt into their face and shit like that and like that was trying to stop that obviously um that's what he does <laughs> yeah um but the whole thing was really like grotesque like he found this like prostitute that he did it to that he didn't like and like her face was like completely melted and gross and it was like horribly drawn and i was like ah like teeth showing and shit um it, it really stuck to me about like that was one of the first times where i was seeing the batman villains as these really horrific monsters rather than like i like bright color costumes you know i'm the time master um or watch master clock master clock master yeah, yeah that's it. whatever calendar man yeah. <laughs> yeah puzzle man yeah um but yeah like I don't know. I don't switching. No, you're right. I like. I like. It is the one where I'd want to like. Plus, it's such a masculine figure, like as a character. Yeah, it's like, like a big, intimidating suit and, and this it, like stark black mask. Yeah. And I liked the kind of mentality behind that, like with those, like this, like really masculine, really abusive, a broken man. It was mm. Really neat. I like that. So. No, no, I, I agree. Um, that being said, I'm open to this. Maybe this would be yeah. Cool. I mean, they can totally make her work. So. Um, Dick's in it has a shaved head. Is that a penis joke? We'll never know. <laughs> um, you just made it one. <laughs> some other villains are Flamingo, Poison Ivy, and White Rabbit. Old. Looks like a granny. Game is starting to roll into production, so we might not see it for a little while, but I am very excited. Um, edit, these games are not being labeled as Arkham, so probably in an alternate continuity. Hmm. No. Hmm. Um, and so just pushing that Damien thing real hard. The source has leaked quite a few villains. Mr. Freeze, The Judge... The Dee Dee Twins, Katana, and a female Black Mask. They also said there's a, an ally type character that they aren't quite familiar with. They described them in a way that made me think Cassandra Kane. Cassandra Kane, Batwoman. No, but I know that name. Yeah, isn't I, for some reason I think Cassandra Kane's Batwoman. I could be totally fucking wrong though. Is it? No, no. Sorry, Barbara was the first one. No, that's, Bat, that's Batgirl. Um, Cassandra Kane is, is another Bat Batgirl. Yeah, it's another Batgirl. Huh. The character is one of several who have assumed the role of Batgirl. Yeah, because Batwoman is someone else. Yeah, what's her name? With the red hair. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> um, I guess that would make sense that it wouldn't be Barbara if the continuity is playing like 
she was still Oracle or something, you know what I mean? But even then, like, if, if uh, Bruce is, like, gray-haired and old, yeah, Barbara would are, probably be in the wheelchair already. If she's not in this continuity, yeah. she's still probably 50, you know, so... <laughs> and not to say that 50-year-old woman can't be Batman, okay. but, you know... So, actually, I, 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 I come on, I'm kind of down with all that, actually. I'm down with everything else but Damian Wayne, like... Okay, but also, if he's going to be older, if he's going to be, like, a grown-up, like, Batman, you know, hmm. he's going to be... A, he's probably a little more mature. You know, he's probably going to have those moments where, like, he's arguing on the bat fucking phone with yeah, Bruce. Be like, <laughs> no, I want to do the cocky thing. And he's like, no, don't do the cocky thing. It'll get you killed. And he's like, no, I'm going to do it. I don't want that. And he I drives don't... up a wall on his bat cycle. <laughs> he's all angsty. I <laughs> 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 like, just... All oh, angsty. No one understands me. <laughs> He's, well, he's, the thing, Damian Wayne's a very cocky character. It's hard to like cocky characters when they're also unlikable. Like, they're cocky characters who are also, like, a little bit like a wink and a nudge, and you're like, oh, that guy's cool. Yeah. I like him. Damian Wayne is also, like, almost like the villain you love to hate. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's supposed to be the hero. Um, I think they've done a better job in recent years uh, with Damian Wayne making him a little more likable, but... Uh, well, you can make the character as likable as you want, but again, I keep on saying this, it's just that Damian Wayne doesn't have the motivation to be a, 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 a hero on the line of a villain. You know, and that's that's Batman's great holds to everything. His design, the cape and cowl, is based on a villainous design, mm. and then his character is a villain, but just on the side of good, right? Mm-hmm. Willing and capable because of his own personal emotional issues of you know crossing lines that being, no other hero would. Well, being raised by Batman's like mentor and enemy. Who? Damian Wayne. Batman's mentor. What? Ra- Ra's al Ghul. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ra's al Ghul, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Damian Wayne is raised by Ra's al Ghul and yeah. fucking, what's her, Talia Ghul. Talia Ghul, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then he gets to, you know, he's like, meet your dad, he's actually a good guy. He's not He's not trying to He's not trying to be immortal or whatever the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's like okay, and then he, then he sees, you know, Batman. I love Ra's al Ghul always has, like, I have a great master plan, I'm immortal, and it takes a long time to happen. But then, like, you know, 30 years later and, like, not an inkling of it, he's just like, Still just sending ninjas at things. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. what is your plan? Have you ever had a plan? Or are you just living forever and just reacting? <laughs> that is what he's doing. He's just reacting. Yeah. He never actually really has a plan. Yeah, but I, I think there could be a cool story in there. Like, say they play it like that where... And he backs off of every plan he ever has. He keeps on sending the ninjas in. And then, like, they'll be like, we're going to destroy the world. No. But I thought you were on the bad guy. What side are you on? Nah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's like flow of the universe. I just go where it needs to. My body is young, but my mind is weak and old. <laughs> I don't. I don't have the. I don't have the. The wherewithal to want to do this anymore. You Batman, see, you can have Gotham. It's fine. Yeah, he doesn't even know how to like use a phone or anything. It's, 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 like, he was uh, talking to no one that whole time. Talia just like hands him a phone to call off ninjas, and he's like a smartphone. He's like, I, I don't. Uh, what am I doing here? It's a conch. <laughs> he just blows into it. <laughs> Did that work? Did I get the ninjas back, honey? She's like, yes. And she has her own plan going on. <laughs> she's like, yes, dad, it worked. And she's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. She's actually doing stuff. She's like, don't listen to him. <laughs> Go left. Attack from the top. You know the deal. Um, anyway, I think it could be cool. I agree. Damian Wayne is not exactly uh, exciting initially when you hear it. I would almost prefer Dick, you know, or someone like... Even, yeah. You know, uh, if, especially if you're going in a whole different continuity, you know. Um, but whatever. Whatever. We'll see. Um, it's interesting, and the game itself sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, the opportunity to upgrade the Batcave is cool. Uh, the Batbike, sure, why not? I don't really ever cared about having a living city, but I'll take it. it yeah, I understand what they mean, but like about it feeling living. But uh, if people are just roaming around, I also don't really care necessarily. Yeah. You know what Plus, I mean? you know, the amount of times where you're just like, I'm going to jump down in the middle of this street. You know, how many times in that game are you going to hear, it's Batman! <laughs> you know, like, you're like, just shut up! Just start throwing right. bombs at them. Uh, all right, God of War 4. Corey Barlog finishes the first full playthrough with leads. I want to, I didn't hear any of this. I wanted to save for this. So this is honestly not much. Oh. Um, it's honestly like, it's, it's, it's a new story based on a tweet. Um, so uh, someone tweeted at Car- Corey Barlog and said, "Like uh, I've given up on God of War news. Sometimes I think the game will only be deer hunting." And Corey Barlog said, "Ha ha! No, no, no! There's a whole game here. We just finished the first playthrough with the leads. Very exciting milestone for us. So the game is playable from start to finish." Which is way further along than what we had anticipated it. Yeah, absolutely. So a, a full playthrough usually puts them at a year. Uh, like the first That's full, what I was going to say, because Final Fantasy XV, they first, first full playthrough, full playthrough was like around this time last year, yeah. I want to say, ish. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's very exciting. Yeah, so it could be a Christmas release for next year. 
Yeah, like, I can see that. Like, E3 2017, like, they're like, God of War, fucking December 2017. Or, or November, or right? Whatever, yeah. yeah. It could totally be. Because yeah. a, a full playthrough means that the entire build works and they didn't fall through the, the world. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know? there was no game-breaking bug, <laughs> right? Like, that's, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, that's all there is, but it's, it's exciting news because God of War looks incredible, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I, will, I will drink up any little bit of news they want to give me. I, just, I want a little bit more... Uh, I'm getting worried about one thing with these open world games and these large games like this, and it happened in Final Fantasy XV. It's happened in a lot of them. It's a, it's a fear. I don't think this... They didn't say this one was open world, did they? It's a large world. Let's just put it that it way. It looks open in, to me, kind of like how Tomb Raider's open. Yeah, that's It's hard. like linear corridors. Tomb, the open last, world and then like linear again. The last Tomb Raider... Yeah, for a good portion of it, did this as well. Um, and I, I agree, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um... Although Final Fantasy is like not an open world, it's just a fucking open world. Yeah, Final Fantasy fifteen is like a large open world. Yes, and then it funnels you through five chapters at once, and then you're like open world again. Yeah. Oh fuck, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> come on the other side. Like, I don't know why they didn't say it wasn't. But what I'm, I'm worried about is like that forest they're in in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's just that all the time, i.e., Skyrim or um, even the latter half of Tomb Raider. No, I have no, 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 no. I don't have any worries about that at all, really. I just don't want it to happen, is all I mean. It's not going to be Skyrim at all. It's not going to be, like, wandering through nothing. God of War has never been that. I can't. Final Fantasy XV is even now, like, it's not the The beginning of Tomb Raider, the rise of the Tomb Raider. I think it's going to be a lot like that. I think it's going to be, like, they're going to funnel you down some areas, and there's going to be kind of an open area where you can fuck around, and there's, like, stuff there, but then funnel you back down, like, I... Do I make a bet? No. Do I make a bet? We'll make a bet. I believe you. You need to buy me a pizza when this comes true. (laughs) I'm not betting because I believe you. I don't have to buy you anything if it doesn't. <laughs> this sounds like a great bet, and I am totally willing to do it. Are you? Are you man yeah. enough? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not worried about that at all, personally. I don't. I really don't think they're going to go that direction. Um, not worried about it being too open. I know what you mean, though. Like even Final Fantasy 15, there's a lot of like. It's just a, they're getting bad. With fucking them. open nothing. They're like, look how big it is. But you're like, there's nothing here. And that's the thing. It's I'll... a fucking nether pear tree or whatever the hell yeah. I'm getting. <laughs> That's the thing that got me, right? Like, they were all about, in Final Fantasy, they were like, oh, this living open world, and they had that whole video of all the animals running around and stuff. I've had, like, two herds pass me on the road, ever. Um, yeah, I was like... And I never see them when you're driving along. You're like, where are the monsters to farm and shit? Like, I don't see any of them ever. I'm like, I'm going to run over that area yeah. over there. And it's like, oh, it's the same fucking frog I've seen a million times. And then all of this, like, yeah. And then uh, this whole, all this beautiful world shots they give you of all these amazing spots and all these really cool places... At the end of the day, it's like one small locale in the whole thing, and even half of them didn't even show up. Like uh, Tenebrae in Final Fantasy XV was that uh, world they showed with all like the multiple level like island towers yeah, yeah. of like that. Yeah, you, you you technically go there, but you just basically stand on a cliff and look at it, and then you don't get to go in. You know, oh, which doesn't make any sense because they have Altitia, which is the big city that with all the waterfalls and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. the most meticulously, beautifully crafted city I've ever walked through in a game ever. It's stunning. Yeah. Stunning work. It, clearly they can do it. <laughs> you know? Square Enix is weird about towns. I remember in Final Fantasy XIII when people asked them, like, hey, why aren't there, like, real towns in this game yeah. and shit? They're like, well, HD towns are hard. And then you look around, like, every other game that exists, and you're like, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> 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 what happened? <laughs> Anyways, all right, moving on. Yeah. Death Stranding. There's an interview with Hideo Kojima by Red Bull Games. Red Bull. <laughs> the make... makers of the horrible energy drink. Red Bull. They make games. They don't make games. They have a games news site, apparently. Ah. They, and they interviewed Hideo Kojima. What the fuck does Red Bull not do or in? Like, you go to, like, a fucking horse derby or something, and there's a fucking horse sponsored by Red Bull. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yeah. They're everywhere. Okay, so um, the only interesting bit out of this, uh, this in, uh, interview was... Kojima on his Konami departure. Originally, I planned to fly a bit low-key. I wanted to do an indie game, something on a smaller scale. But, well, my good friend, film director, Guillermo del Toro, I feel like he said it like this, like, my friend. Like, you know, just a little, little like, brush off on his shoulder. Like, yeah, like, he feels like... My he, friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he would have Kojima would ever need to brag about being friends. He probably thinks everyone should be his friend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He'd probably just show up and be like, I am Hideo Kojima. I'm back. And I'm like, oh. back. Yes. Um, Gilmore Del Toro said, no, Hideo, you can't do that. People want more from you, and you have to give them a new big game. So we're sending out a big thank you card. To- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Gilmore. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that he knew that like people that's what people want. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't have been like, if Kojima came out and was like, I'm making a small indie game, I would have been very intrigued, and I would want to see what he'd do. 
But I'd also be like, that's a year and a half wasted on a smaller game when you could be making Death Stranding, the weirdest title that I've ever seen in my life. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, Del Toro and Kojima first met during the screening of Hellboy 2 in Tokyo, became friends and started production on the Silent Hill reboot. Interesting. I didn't know that little part. What? I didn't know they met at a Hellboy 2 screening in Tokyo. I didn't know how they met, actually. I didn't really, wasn't really sure what their their fucking relationship was how that even happened probably they, they, i just thought like weirdo and weirdo were like they just like emailed each other i think they probably like were uh, pulled by some sort of invisible magnetism to each other yeah like hideo kojima was uh, i honestly think Hideo was like, he lands on a plane and he just and he perks up someone else i feel it like me <laughs> right and then the del toro just starts walking in a direction they're like no oh, like, come back i feel like hideo kojima saw mimic in like 1999 which is like one of gilmore's first movies yeah. and he's just like typing in email ever since then like just in gilmore del toro at yahoo.ca <laughs> sends, sends an email it's like bounce back he's like fuck gilmore del toro at yahoo.com <laughs> like, just keep, <laughs> just keeps it up like he just can't <laughs> and he finally got through to him <laughs> that's his hunting method all right Prey details. Hmm. A long list. There's a long list of them, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna rapid fire them at you, and you tell me when to stop, and we can talk about an interesting yeah. thing. All right. If you don't know, Prey is a video game. Go look it up. Get yourself educated, motherfucker. You play female or male, mostly cosmetic, but some characters may react differently. Talos One is roughly the size of the Empire State Building. That's the station you're on. I would imagine. Is that the whole game, though. I guess so. Well, if it's roughly the, I guess yeah, that works. Yeah. Right. Uh. Free reign to explore Talos 1, the interior and exterior. One giant interconnected mission. We saw that. Yeah. There are locked off areas, natural barriers that require you to find a code, voice, restore power, etc. to unlock. So, so video game. Yeah, typically, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Typical game shit. Elevator that takes you to all the decks, but it's broken. So you need to figure out how to fix it before you can use it. Annoying fucking thing that's also in all video games. There are areas accessible from the start, but traveling there low level isn't a great idea. What? There are areas accessible from the start. But traveling there at a low level isn't a great idea. Oh, cool. I love that in video games. Yes. I love you the feeling of, of danger. I, fu- I fucking hate Fallout and Skyrim for that. I love, I love both of those games. But, like, I never felt like I was ever going to get, like, fucked anywhere. I wasn't wandering into a really dangerous area. Yeah. It was always like, whatever. They're, they're the same level as me. I can stab them with my pokey knife and it'll be fine. Like, it doesn't <laughs> really matter. But I love when there's, like, in Final Fantasy XV... Don't go over there. That's a level 46 Bandersnatch, and yeah. he's going to chop your fucking head off. You cannot handle him at level one. Like, no, do yeah. not go over there. It makes it feel dangerous, and you're like, oh, i got to come back here to explore. Like, yeah. it's, uh, or it's, even you play the little game where you're like, I just need to get behind him. Maybe I'll try and sneak around. Yeah. Shit like that, you know? Or you try to fuck with it, yeah, when yeah. you're too low level, and you, it's really, like, intense, and you, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. I love shit like that in I video games. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Um, System Shock meets Super Metroid. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Those are both good. <laughs> uh, side quests are scattered around My the station. My movie's gonna be Aliens too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Metroid Prime esque scanning to find enemy weaknesses and whatnot. Cool. Uh, more RPG elements compared to previous arcane games. Firearm skills, repair skills, blah blah blah. Did they mention anything about the power? Isn't that? Uh, just firearm skills, repair skills, and then it says etc. So I don't know. Okay, we, but we I mean, there's that like. Yeah. Like mimic matter and all yeah. that shit you know like I, I want to know like I, there's going to be a source for that which was what made it really Bioshocky. it felt like he was going around and injecting shit into his eyes that was maybe giving him these abilities which is yeah. again in a whole world of like, everyone, makes, like... everyone makes that joke in Bioshock where it's like they all come after you with guns yet these machines are freely handing out all these mega superpowers and he's the only one using them it's like yeah. why didn't you choose the shoot lightning bolt from hand power <laughs> you know like because they're idiots who wear rabbit masks. Yeah. Status ailments such as third degree burns, concussions. Similar to Metal Gear Solid 3, there are penalties for trauma that you need to tend to. I like that too. I like consequences. You like those systems? Uh, I, hmm. okay. I hate if we're talking, If we're talking legit, just about Metal Gear Solid 3, I liked how it was implemented, but I did not like how you had to go into like three different sub-menus to go get something, to go back to heal yourself on the main screen. Well, that's annoying too, but... I always hated having to manage a thousand and one different kinds of healing items to cover every single fucking injury. Um, because this is because a fir- people get a kick out of it with DayZ, right? Where like you had to worry about whether or not you were losing blood, so you had to make sure you had sutures and the padding and then the pressure and then the tie and the, like the you know like, do the proper garret. And, when it's too much, when it's like, too much like survival management, like, and shit. Yeah, when it's too much survival management like that, it's a little too much for me. Yeah. When I was playing Fallout New Vegas, they had a survival mode where you could get thirsty. And their and ammo also care, uh, was in your weight, in mm-hmm. your, so you had to worry about weight way more than usual, and you had to drink something every so often. I kind of like that. I kind of like the pressure of that. Um, 
Hmm. I, I like shit like that, but you're right, not too not too heavy on it, right? Let's just give me a light dose. Give me a little casual dose of it, because otherwise it does become Well, I just I hated it in games when like you go through an epic battle and then it just turns out that, you know, you didn't know it was coming or something and you didn't take the one fucking solvent that's supposed to cure well, the burn. I hate when I run into a Marlboro in a Final Fantasy game and I don't have like a fucking soft or something and I'm like, What I don't even know where to get them right now. <laughs> Why is this... Yeah. Especially no. when you blank on it, because you play, like, the late game content, and everyone has a ribbon on, and you just forget yeah. about them entirely, and then you play, like, a new a new game, like Final Fantasy VII, and then suddenly eight, and you run into something, and you're like, what the fuck is... Oh, status effects, you're right. Like, That's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. Nothing, everything doesn't just hurt. Um, no, but I think third-degree burns and concussions would be actually kind of interesting to deal with in first person and, like, wandering on the station. Concussion would be kind of cool, because, like, the blurry... And then, yeah, like, and, and it's like, can you, okay, can you deal with this, and you don't want to heal yourself right away, or do you want to barrel forward and just be like, Aah! It was like... <laughs> he just gets more and more stupid as he gets hit. Yeah, you know head. what I mean? Like, third degree burns, like, I don't know how it's going to affect gameplay. Maybe you don't shoot as well, or maybe you're just, like, like a little limp. Ugh. Whatever. Yeah, you'll probably have him, like, going... Like, constantly, again. Until Maybe you shaking find or fucking, something? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, there's something about the mechanics that kind of drives me nuts. But I, it, it can be implemented correctly. You're right. You gain powers through the use of oh. neural mods, which were originally sold to the human population to augment themselves. But the player can use them to gain alien powers as well. Cool. Uh, PSI mode? Psy mode? Okay, so it's, they might have just covered their own ass there. Because I'm like, Bioshock, stupidity, why does not everyone have one? Mm. And then... Alien powers as well, meaning that maybe his are different. Yeah. Which would be like, okay, there we go. Um, Psy mode, you can look around freely, but time moves forward when you move. Sounds super hot inspired. Super hot was that, yeah, right? Yeah, it was like you freeze time, and then when you take one step, everything would take a step forward. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. It was a neat mechanic in super hot, uh, and this is starting to sound really packed with too many mechanics. Acquiring alien abilities makes you appear more alien to Talos 1's security system, turning the defense turrets that would normally fight for you against you. That's cool. That's really neat, actually, yeah. Especially, I love when your character changes when they, as they equip and put more stuff on or change. Or yeah, like you're becoming more Plus alien now than you know, human. I'm going to just, like, I'm going to pound every alien thing possible. <laughs> I want to look as non-human <laughs> immediately. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, Talos 1 has fallen victim to an alien outbreak that it was built to contain. Uh, Poltergeist Typhon? Poltergeist Typhon. I think they mean Typhoon. There's only one O. Poltergeist Typhoon behaves how it sounds. Sure. Mimic can decide... Poltergeist it. Typhoon. I don't know. A bunch of ghosts just wave at you like, <laughs> Whoa! Spooky! Or they just like come in as a giant storm. Just fuck everything up. <laughs> That's a tornado. What am I supposed to do? Um, Mimic can disguise itself as anything in the environment that isn't bolted down. Player can get this power too. And we were we were actually talking about that. Yeah, we were like, it's everything except for whatever is bolted yeah, down. Yeah, that's interesting because of course, we're... then they could just bolt down a chair and be like, nope. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. You just sucked all of my fucking hope out of that one. <laughs> telepath possesses people. You can simply kill this person, stun them, or find the telepath and s kill it to set them free. So there's humanoid characters, not just the goo monsters. Yep, that's good. Incapacitating people is temporary, unlike in Dishonored. Uh, typhon dub nightmare. I don't know what the fuck a typhon is. That's clearly not a typo. <laughs> Poltergeist Typhoon is now our new album name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Typhoon dubbed Nightmare hunts you down through Talos 1. Closest comparison might be Nemesis or the Alien in Alien Isolation. We talked about this when we were talking about Resident Evil 7. Mm. We don't want things to hunt you through the whole game. No. Not the whole game. So is there something what? doing that? Sorry, I was, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing about Poltergeist Typhoon. Oh, okay. Typhoon dubbed Nightmare. I guess Typhons are the type of aliens? The black things, I guess. Yeah. Um, Typhon, Typhon dubbed Nightmare hunts you down through Talos 1. Closest comparison might be Nemesis or the Alien in Alien Isolation. But it could be situational in just, like, scripted spaces, which would be fine. Again, that's what, yeah, we talked about this Resident Evil 7 uh, podcast two or three podcasts ago. Go back and listen to that one. But, yeah, we we're both we we're both totally not down with something hunting you through an entire game. Yeah, like, if that fucking farmer is chasing me for the entire game, I yeah, don't want it. Yeah, not going to be down. No. But if it's, like, certain sections, like absolutely ne fine. Like Nemesis or the fucking uh, thing in 2, you know, like... Or the thing in Dead Space one where there's just a it's like one chapter of something stalking you yeah. long chapter and it's real tense and that's good that's all i needed yeah because i don't want to be uh. like managing my resources and then suddenly be like oh look i spent you know five minutes in here and i just figured out how to get through this puzzle dun -dun 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 -dun. fucking okay now yeah run half the levels down reload the system come back up and go back into my spot now he's gonna be another five minutes until he gets here um and the more neuromods you use the more likely nightmare will become aware of you hmm. oh i I like that. 
It's like it's like they're facing you the whole fucking game. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's what that means. Um, that's interesting too, though. No, it would be neater too. Is like if you got more alien, that we pay less attention to you because he thinks you're like one of his own type thing. Well, I wonder if that's they're trying to balance the game right because maybe the alien powers are super fucking powerful. So it's like okay, if you're gonna be more powerful. Turrets are gonna fucking turn at you, and same with this nightmare thing. Yeah. If you're just human, and maybe walk by you, and they're like, "What are you? Whatever." Well, that's what I mean. Like maybe it makes the aliens less uh, attracted to you, and you fight less aliens, but the ship and the station and the people go after you. But if you do more neuro mods, yeah, then you know the more the alien will go after you because you're a threat. But the human stuff is safer. Um, you're right. That sounded like a lot of features yeah. on that list. Um, it's like a lot of resource management for something that because if something's chasing you, you're always moving. And I don't want to have to worry about my burning, my concussion, my puzzle solving, my... No, no, no. You know. I mean, that, I'm, to, okay, I'm into puzzle solving. I'm stupid as hell. Can't do that. But if I'm running and I'm also, like, burnt and concussed and I'm fucked up and I'm like, ah, I'm like six parts alien. <laughs> Shit, you noticed me. Like, and I'm just limping down this fucking hallway. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Again, don't want that thing throughout the whole game, though. Do not want that. Because I'm a bit of a bitch. All right. A bit of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bruce Fraley not directing The Last of Us 2. Update, Sony confirms. Um, so for those who actually probably don't know, Bruce Fraley is the unspoken second director to all of Neil Gaiman's work. Yeah. Neil Gaiman's <laughs> fucking Neil Druckmann. Not Neil Druckmann. Neil Druckmann. Uh, who did uh, The Last of Us and Uncharted 4. Yeah. And Bruce Fraley did co-direct Uncharted 4 as well. Um, he will not have the same role on Last of Us 2. Uh, on The Last of Us 2. His longtime creative partner, Neil Druckmann, is directing the game. Um He's, he's on sabbatical. He's on like a year-long sabbatical. Mm-hmm. I assume which he took after the they finished up Uncharted 4. Um, I think he was probably involved in the post-production, uh, you know, con- conceptual side and maybe some writing. That's the thing. I would have to imagine that he was involved in some way early on. Because we, we've already determined that this game has been in pro- being made for a lot longer than what they tried to lie about. Um, <laughs> uh, you can, again, listen to our podcast on uh, the PSX. Yeah, uh, yeah, the one to the the last one before we did the best of games, yeah. best of movies. Uh, we talk about the the lies that came unraveling in their little uh, interview uh, for the panel. But uh, if that's the case, and like they were writing the script way back on the first expansion for Last of Us, you know, uh, Bruce Trailer was still there, and they probably were working together. They're very close, and they worked on everything together. So I guarantee you, the creative input's probably still all in the the pre stuff, but the directing for probably when they started filming. Uh, and all that, he probably backed out at that point, and filming for the the live action scenes is what I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, he's not there. He, are, he hasn't been there. I'm not sure for how long now, but like I said, he probably wrapped up Uncharted Four and went on sabbatical. So and he's going to be back in a year anyway. So he's going to be involved in the production in some way, right? Like, there's no way that he's going to come back and they're going to be like, okay, well, we're we're, we're mid Last of Us Two right now. Uh, don't really have a role for you. If you want to go in your office and like doodle or whatever you want to do, that's fine. That's the thing too. They say here he's not going to be a director, but he used to be, and I was just making sure and it popped up right there, is he's also, he used to be an art director and that's why he's a little bit more tough because Druckmann's more of a writer um, and uh, I, I, I know this from like some of the stuff, but um, and Straley is more of the arts guy. Um, Straley never is in the public guy as much as Druckmann. Druckmann no, is always like he's the, an arts guy. the face of the thing. Yeah, he's yeah. the arts guy, that's why. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, being the uh, art director and stuff like that, it, it means that uh, he might just be a, like, um, uh, what is that called when you're like a co, not the producer, you're like, maybe he's either gets an art direction to, uh, credit or something like that, or a, uh, some other role just somewhere down the list where he's had his piece in it, because I guarantee you he hasn't not touched the game, I just don't think he's oh, yeah. directed the game. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, but, uh, there, that does twinge a little bit of concern, we've never seen, um, Neil working alone, technically. Alone. Yeah. yeah. How much genius is behind... Uh, or how much of Bruce Straley is, like, reigning in Neil Druckmann, maybe, you know? We don't know anything about Neil Druckmann. He seems like a great visionary and, yeah. like, super good dude. The trailers uh, uh, communicated everything the same again. So I'm thinking, you know, Straley was still involved at that point. As long as he was there to help kind of curb the whole... You know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, again, yeah, and I wish Bruce was here, obviously, because Last of Us was so fucking good. So good. You'd want to recreate that magic, but, like, Last of Us 2 is probably going to be incredible anyway, so whatever. Um, and besides, when it comes down to directing for a game, uh, the creational pro- process in the beginning is a lot more collaborative. The directing part comes from the scenes, uh, sequences, uh, script writing, and stuff like that, and I no fear of Neil's skills in that context. No, exactly. I just, I hope it doesn't lose anything by losing him as a director. No, I hope it doesn't either. 
our hearts are with you, Bruce Trailer. Yeah. Final Fantasy 15 is down 56% in sales from Final Fantasy 13, the lowest single player debut since Final Fantasy 5. In Japan. In Japan. Yeah. So this is interesting. Because um, it's doing epically everywhere else. It's doing, yeah, it's doing pretty well everywhere else. And I, I no, it's doing epic. The latest news reports are saying it's like a top selling game and blah, blah, blah. I know they say that. They've shipped 5 million copies. No, it's more now. Way more. Um, what they ship and what they sell are also very different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's always a good way of, of people being like, we shipped this many. And then and you're like, okay, Nintendo, you shipped 5 million Wii U's. <laughs> are there 5 million Wii U's bought? <laughs> Still no. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I, I agree. But sure, it just seems to be doing well. The, the, no, the lot of news thing today said that it hit record-breaking sales. Um, so Everywhere else. Okay, so what is wrong with Japan, A? <laughs> B, do you think Square Enix saw this coming? Yes. And kind of geared Final Fantasy XV a little more to the Western audience yes. because of this? Yes. Yeah. Hence their little stupid line in the beginning where it's a Final Fantasy for everyone and not just Japanese people. I still find it weird that like every time you boot the game up it yes. says that. It's like, this is getting old. <laughs> it's not the same thing as the Ubisoft one where like, this was made by a group of multicultural and multi-religious people. And I'm like, I get it. You're like a big you know, melting pot family. I don't care no. anymore. Just um, let me stab people with my wrists. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yes, it was. It, it, they said so that it was an intentional thing to gear this towards a North American uh, to worldwide release audience rather than uh, to a uh, just a Japanese one. But the interesting part is that Japan got really, really, really disenfranchised with the Final Fantasy series. It was before thirteen. Twelve. Me, twelve even. I think it was twelve. Yeah. The, the series started going a direction that they didn't like, which was odd because, like. Well, I guess actually, you know what is true? That Final Fantasy feel from seven, eight, nine, and ten. Mm-hmm. Never not present in twelve. Not present. Not present in thirteen. No, not present. In, well, the the uh, MMO, yes, it's definitely there. But uh, even then, you know. But I have to wonder if this communicates out whether or not <laughs> Japan is uh, uh, getting tired of its own tropes. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like, maybe they're tired of all the people in over-elaborate decorative armor and, you know, because they've had it way Funky longer anime hair and, and on everything. Yeah. Like, maybe their culture is moving past that. I was watching a documentary recently about food in Japan, and they were talking about how kids are not eating the traditional meals that they used to eat all the time. Mm. You know, it's turning into some things that are getting pretty North American. Like, they actually have a concept of breakfast now and stuff like that. Um, but... Uh, uh, like, if that's the case, if that's also happening maybe in the inside of their own culture, maybe the Japanese culture is moving away from what we stereotypically are thinking is what they would like. Mm-hmm. Um, but it could also just be that for some weird reason, they got really pissed about whatever the franchise did. Yeah, it's odd, right? Like, yeah. hmm. like why were, did they get that pissed? But the weirdest part at the end of the whole day is, how is 15 less appealing? Yeah. I don't mean, know. I take the Japanese stereotypical boy band looks out of the picture. There's a shit ton in there that I would think would go straight to that culture. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's, yeah, that's why this is a news story, right? It's so fucking odd. Mm. It, you'd think this would be a smash hit there. Like, I know, you know, Dragon Quest is big there too, still. Which is weird because Dragon Quest has always been I, less appealing to me personally. We don't understand the Japanese market, though. We don't know if our AAA games are as big and important to them, etc., etc. They are, mostly. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing. Like, Horizon Zero Dawn may not... Well, I mean, that's a raw, bad example, but let's just take it now. Call of Duty. Would probably Call be of Duty. That's going to be one that's like, they're like, yeah, we don't, who gives a shit? Yeah, you know, yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> but then over here, it makes like, you know, a billion dollars in a week or some shit. Um, but then, you know, like, they're eating up Overwatch, I think, probably... I believe that's true. Yeah. Um, but there's very few releases. So, so, like, what they like in their market... When I was in Japan, the thing I saw the most of was a lot of PSP stuff for, like, the kind of the old-school JRPGs. Mm. You know, like, Chrono Trigger-esque, but more... Like, you see them on the iOS market and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, like, the little 2D sprite, but a little bit more drawn uh, kind of stuff. Um, you know, the, uh, the Final Fantasy uh, Worlds uh, game there... Yeah, it looks like garbage. Yeah, but that's more popular for them. Ugh. Like, Blech. that stuff <laughs> is definitely their shit. So, 
maybe these AAA games they just don't have an appeal to the Japanese audience. Anymore. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's all about bite sized Well, I mean, mobile mobile games were the bigger there. Yeah, back so. in the day, we used to get like the demo discs and have that like secret option to turn on the Japanese versions on a lot of them. Yeah. And they would have like all the Japanese games you'd never see here. And we were always like, oh, we never get those Japanese games here. Now it seems that we're making those games, but Japan doesn't because they don't like them anymore. Yeah. Taste has shifted over there. Yeah. Clearly so. Anyways, that's interesting. I wonder how the next Dragon Quest will do. If that sells millions, I'll be like, why? Why? What happened? What happened? What, happened? <laughs> what is wrong with people? All right. Witcher developer CD Projekt Red gets seven million from the Polish government towards its next game. Its okay. next game is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, which is an exciting looking game, and that is you put more money. Just put more money into it. But from the government, like the government's like, hey, it's, it's like the president is like a fucking video game nerd, and he's like, well, it's seven million dollars we need to put into transportation. Got to fix those sidewalks. But if you played Witcher three, yeah, eh, that's pretty fucking good. Like, yeah, like uh. <laughs> No, it's, it's interesting. Or they're just like thinking like, our country is not very popular. You're like our only real good export. So that's what, well, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. right? Like it's probably like, like, like. Make us cool. It's the, probably the number one thing coming out of Poland. <laughs> so <laughs> like, yeah, why not pump yeah. your money into it? Because like that's what Montreal did, right? The moment they had Ubisoft Montreal there, they're like, we're a gaming city. And everyone's like, really? And they showed up, right? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> hey, cool. I mean, the like, Ontario uh, that's funds. That's a note to any like uh, studios out there that want to build a new studio. Ottawa. We've got uh, a lot of talent here, and I'm not making that up as a joke. I know the Ontario uh, government also uh, like funds some games. They do. They do. Um, Capybara in Toronto uh, has uh, one or two of its games funded by Ontario. Seven, seven million dollars, though. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not. Probably no. Probably no. No. Probably no. more like they have funds that they do do to help with stuff, and it's like this little things like uh, dealing with publishing costs or uh, shipping releases and stuff like that. They cover the big costs that usually would fall outside of Canadian resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we have to go to a U.S. publisher to try and have this stuff done. They help with funds to do that. Like, you know, you can apply for this bursary to get your blah, blah, blah. And so... Yeah. It's just interesting, cool. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, polish yeah, the fuck out of more power to the game to actually have it happen. Maybe it comes out sooner thanks to the $7 million push they can hire for more people. Two more stories and we're done newsy news, I promise. Pokemon. To follow behind you in Pokemon Switch? Question mark? <laughs> so, data mining uh, is a thing that people do in video games. You know, like, they go deep into the, the code or whatever yeah. the fuck, find weird, like, models that weren't used or all this shit. People recently data mined fucking PT. Yeah. Found a weird, unused model in that and stuff. They started placing them on weird shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they started taking Lisa from PT in, this, in the rain dance scene in mm-hmm. MGS5 and shit. Like, yeah. super good. And it was like, well, why were there a lot of the babies everywhere suddenly? One of them. Anyways. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. All right. Uh, so, data mining has discovered in Pokemon Sun and Moon, um, Pokemon from all generations, one to seven, some that aren't even available in the game. Like, you can't just can't access, access them anyway. Um, and all forms, Megas and Shinies, they all got walking animations, and they all have running animations to follow behind a character, presumably. This is a big thing for Pokemon. I know you're not <laughs> deep in the Pokemon culture, mm-hmm. but Pokemon Soul Silver, well, Pokemon Yellow, mm-hmm. I had Pikachu follow you around. Yeah. Ever since then, people are like, why can't every Pokemon follow you around? Why can't they fucking do it? Pokemon Soul Silver, the remake of Pokemon Silver. Would you really want a line of all six of your Pokemon just walking around behind Absolutely you? not. It's only one. It's okay. always only one. Mm-hmm. So you get one to follow you around. It's usually the first guy in your party. Yeah. And it was cool. It's not really like a feature to me that's like, it's cool, but it's not like necessary. It doesn't make or break the game. It's like, yeah. whatever. But they know people love it. And people are thinking that this is for when... Sun Moon, the stars, Pokemon Stars comes out on the Switch as like the third version. Mm-hmm. It's like the updated version of Pokemon Sun Moon. They're going to have the Pokemon falling behind you. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I thought it was for like a whole new game. No, really doubt it. I mean, it could be. But, but why I, would it be in the game? Why would it be in Sun and Moon? Yeah. Because they're just going to take Sun and Moon and be like, oh, here you go. You know? Could also be something that they never planned on using and they just ditched it and it was stuck in the back of the code. Totally. It could totally be that as well. Yeah. But I could believe this. Yeah, you know, it's a, it was, I bet that would get like every Pokemon nerd to buy a Switch. Yeah, I buy a Switch just to have a Pokemon follow you in a game you already played. I'm gonna get a Switch anyways, but yeah, yeah. Actually, no. You know what? I wouldn't play Pokemon Stars if it was just Sun and Moon again. Yes, probably wouldn't. No, that'd have to be pretty different. But I maybe they'll actually make Pokemon Switch a different game too. Ba- I, maybe it's based off the, the the engine that's running Sun and Moon. I want. That's what I prefer personally. Yeah, but I want a, a, a Pokemon game. Away from the system. I want 
you know, a fucking Pokemon that is going to, like, actually, like, climb around on me, and then I can actually send it down. This can actually, when I say it dodges, it doesn't just, like, slides to the left and then go back to the same position. Mike, you're asking for stuff that Nintendo is not going to do for upwards of 30 years. Yes. Until they're truly fucked, they will never milk Pokemon the way they should. Yeah. They milk it, but not the way they should. No. Nope. Really. Um... Anyways, that's, that's potentially exciting. Mm-hmm. Last bit of news here. Overwatch's new comic confirms the game's first queer character. Which is Tracer. Tracer. Yeah. yeah building up to it. Um, it's a, They made Tracer into a lesbian character in their latest little uh, Christmas comic, um, which is great. I, I'm apparently causing high reactions on either side. Blizzard Entertainment has teased that there are multiple queer characters in Overwatch's cast. Well, it's a huge fucking cat. And the holiday kiss she shares with Emily makes Tracer the first of those heroes to be confirmed. Yes. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously I've seen a lot on both sides. People yeah. being idiots, like, people, you know, they're like, how dare you make this game political and about SJW rights and blah, 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 blah. Like, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? What the <laughs> fuck's SJW? Uh, Social Justice Warriors. Oh. Yes. That is a thing. No, but it's just say. about inclusion, right? Like, I mean, they've got tons of race stuff going on. They've got everyone from nations. They're a fucking gorilla. <laughs> like they can't have a gay <laughs> you know they have a robot gorilla well they have nations every nation they have Egyptian it's okay um, they have Egyptian they have fucking Asian and, yeah and, you know yes yeah, it's a very diverse game yeah so not surprising that one of them would be yeah. gay social well, justice multiple. warriors uh, like right there should be you know screaming and having a wonderful time but uh, you know, the, yeah, a couple of them might end up being queer in some fashion. The things that people get mad about, Mike, just continue to fucking boggle my mind. Just truly blast my ass. I do not understand. <laughs> my ass. Do not understand the outrage that's at the, all. That's the title of this episode. <laughs> if you've made it this far along, check the title. It should say episode 56, Blast My Ass. <laughs> like, I just do not fucking understand. And I feel like it's getting worse, personally. Like, I feel like it's getting worse because, like, people... Look, I understand. Like, be, a gay character is fairly new to video games in general, right? Like, it's a fairly yeah, like, new I mean, concept in video the games. The only one that ever truly does it is Bioware with Mass Effect. And, uh... And, uh Dragon Age. Uh, Ellie from Last of Us, right? Oh, yes, right. Um, oh, that's DLC. Not everyone saw that. But, you know, it's like a new concept. People, they're scared. They're idiots. They're, they're I don't want the, the, the politics in my games. So, fine. Like, I almost understand where they're, like, you know, that they're scared of it from. But, like, do you remember when Watch Dogs 2 confirmed that they have a black lead character? People fucking lost their shit. They were like, oh, you're just trying to appease the, the people who want diversity. Don't, you're, you're ruining games by doing... I was like, really? Like, we've had black characters in games before. A long time. Grand Theft Auto... San Andreas had a black main character. Yeah. Like, in Yakuza, fucking 15 you, you, years ago. You play as a Japanese guy, like... And it's just, like... Guys. Can we not? Mm-hmm. Can we not? Because at the end of the day, it will make zero difference to you. You'll see it and you'll be like, oh, that made no difference. Yeah, and it's also, it's like, if they weren't even shoving in your face, it's a fucking comic off to the side. It's not in the main, like, yeah. Tracer's not, like, scissoring with someone as her victory pose, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just fucking, just going at it, like. It's like you're playing the character and you're zipping around, suddenly she just stops, and then zips around a corner and starts making it. Like, ah, why won't you, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's like this assault on your character. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's, it's, yeah, it's just fucking, it's, it's just mind-boggling. I feel like people are just getting, like, the people who don't want change are, like, acting, like, so sensitive about it, and they, they accuse the other side of being so sensitive about it and it's like guys everyone just shut up it doesn't matter it's just fucking video games can we all just like each other (laughs) and with that (laughs) it's so fucking shocking alright so coming up next I know it's a long episode already but we're gonna have a short segment about the future of the podcast yes pop our ideas at you guys and uh, we'll get back to us and let us know what you want to see absolutely stay tuned for more ass blasting Welcome back to the second segment of the Pens and Pixels podcast, in which we talk about the future of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to be a shorter segment. We finished yeah. off the first, uh, well, I mean, we finished off the technical year, or the full year of the... Yeah, we've been podcasting for over a year now. Yes. Podcasting, that's right. Um, <laughs> and, it's like popping a cherry. You know, we're, we're episode 56, we've done more than... That's 56 weeks then, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've done more than 56 episodes because we have spoiler cast and stuff, but, yeah. you know... Now, the main episodes we've crossed a year, and uh, we're entering into a new year, and we want to do some new stuff, and 
we want to provide more content for you guys. Uh, you know, we actually do have a listener base, and we're really grateful for all of you. Yeah, thanks um, for listening. If you're if you're still listening, thank you. Yeah. That's that's fucking fantastic. I mean, we only get names of the, those of who are SoundCloud subscribers. So thanks, Luca, who apparently is our biggest fan. Luca Kotar. Yeah. You want to be interviewed? Because <laughs> that's the first thing we're going to be doing in the new year is we're going to be interviewing. Well, game developers, hopefully uh, uh, other artists. artists too and stuff. Yeah, so currently on the slate, uh, we definitely have our interview with Owen Jury, Ottawa developer, um, uh, Shader God. Uh, follow him on Twitter, it's just, it's insane. Yeah, he does I, some really interesting stuff. I have no clue how he makes what he makes, but we'll be talking to him about that stuff. He um, made a game called... Big Radio, Small Television? Thank or Small Radio, Big Television? One of the two. It's one of those two. <laughs> it's some variation on that. Which we will know before we interview him. I swear. Um, <laughs> but we're interviewing him, and we're, uh, we're going to talk to him about his game, about his process, yeah. you know, about how he, we went about everything. I'm going to try and get, uh, or, sorry, I'm trying to get a date uh, to get uh, Jeff Isherwood, a uh, longtime Marvel artist, uh... 26 years, I think, working on Conan, Doctor Strange, like right after Liefeld and stuff like that. Like yeah, really cool which is stuff. cool. Um, lots of other really great books. I think he even did some Daredevil and some DC. Mm-hmm. And he's done concept art as a concept artist for uh, three of the X-Men films. Uh, actually, um, Psylocke's Sword in the latest one. Mm-hmm. That's his. Oh, yeah. there you go. So we'll try and get him on board to come over and talk. Jeff's a character, and he's got some fun stories. I love listening to him talk about like going into the office and having Brian Singer standing on the table acting like Wolverine to try and demonstrate the scene. <laughs> like, that sounds like the greatest day at work. Um, <laughs> but uh, Hugh Jackman, you got to do this! <laughs> from you guys, what we want to hear is... Uh, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> the visual. Yeah. Uh, flexing. Me every time. <laughs> so from you guys, what we want to hear is... Uh, what kind of people do you want us to interview? Yeah, do you want us to interview more artists? Do you want to hear some game developers? Because we can try and pull some strings. And yeah. uh, if you want us to interview, you know, fucking Grant Gustin from The Flash, <laughs> like I will try my hardest to get a hold of him. But like, <laughs> you know, that maybe that's not too doable. But if there, you know, there's some smaller indie people that you'd like to hear from, like absolutely, we'd like to interview them and talk to them about their artistic process. Yeah, we're tied into the more gra- grassroots stuff here in Ottawa, uh, pretty solidly, and. Um, if you wanted to hear from people in different industries on how they got their start as being starting out people in industry, right? Like, you know, I personally work in industry. I teach, uh, you know, Cal's a very talented artist who's done lots of great freelance work. Um, you know, so we know people and stuff like that. If you want to hear us talk about that kind of uh, stuff while swearing a lot, then, yeah, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, let us know. Just give us a little bit of advice on what kind of direction you want us to take. Absolutely. Uh, Next up, we also want to start implementing uh, comic reviews. Yes. Um, and probably for the bigger stuff at first, like the Marvel stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I've been reading the new Venom, and I want an outlet to talk about it. This I don't know how... This picking favorites. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? We're picking favorites, going to be uh, discussing, and they're going to be no more than seven-minute reviews, yeah. I think ten-minute reviews, you know, just little things like what we thought of this issue, where we think it's going, type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to what we do with the Hunter, Hunter cast, yeah. actually. Um, and do you want this to be podcast content, Mike, or just YouTube? Uh, for a seven minute segment, I think it's better to do this. Well, I mean, we'll leave it up to you guys. Uh, so it's part I just of the didn't, whole... I don't want to muck up our feed, like our main podcast feed. Yeah. It's like a comic review every month too, you know, yeah. it's uh, if they don't care about the comics, it's that's something they got to delete out of their podcast app and you know yeah. what I mean. Um, but we'll leave it up to you guys if you want the audio version of that. Um, but I think we'll focus it into just doing YouTube. So that's part of the whole thing is we're going to try and start offering some YouTube content. Uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, well, I'm tr- going to try and be better about posting every episode to YouTube as well, so you have another venue to access it. Yeah. Um, and we'd also like to do uh, art analysis videos. Yeah. These would be uh, slightly more scripted. Well, slightly more. They'd be completely more. Nothing here is scripted. <laughs> uh, they'd be script, a little more scripted content where we're talking about the design and the art of a, of a particular... It could be a movie. It could be a game. It could be a comic, whatever. But we were thinking of doing, for example, Bastion or something, mm-hmm. right? Where we just really, like, go into, like, the themes of the game and, yeah. like, like why they did the art this way, why it, the character design is this way. And it won't just be for popular games that are good. It could be for a horrible game. But, you know, like, as artists, even the worst game ever has had some beautiful work come out of it. Um, a heck, some of the Call of Duty uh, concept art is actually stunning. <laughs> You just implied Call of Duty is a bad game, Mike. No, but it's all the same stuff. Sure, like, yeah, yeah. You know, no, yeah, there's absolutely... Like, how much war can you draw? Apparently, these guys can draw a lot of real good war. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> they are, they're very good at that. Um, but that's what, that's what we're going to talk about, is like, well, maybe we'll take a concept art book, like you said, Bastion, and take all the concept art from Gentran, and, uh, you know, take break to look at that and break it down, and, uh, you know, discuss a whole bunch of different stuff. But on that part as well, if we were to discuss artwork, what would you guys want to hear about when we talk about it? Do you want us to hear just our opinion on it, breakdown of what it is. Do you want to hear something really focused, like just on character design? Do you want it just on environment design? Do you yeah. want just on enemy design? Yeah. You know, like the, like, a, like, do you want to see an analysis video on like, just say Nemesis from Resident Evil 3? Like, why he looks the way he does, like, yeah. what we think of this Do you want us to break it down into those kind of segments, like, break it down character, environment, blah, 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 which we can try and do and be efficient. Remember, the more we cram into one episode, though, it'll mean less time to focus in on one subject. So, you know, just figure out what you want to hear. And um, we're going to experiment a little bit with it, too, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll probably do an episode where we do a little one character heavy, or yeah. we do an entire game's worth of, yeah. you know, our analysis, so. And if you have suggestions on things that you want to hear from us that you want us to break down, then let us know. Absolutely, contact us. Again, that's meetpensandpixels at gmail.com. Yeah. Or you can or tweet at us yes. uh, at pins and, pex- pens and pixels. Pans and pixels. Pans and pixels. Uh, pens and pixels, or at the Kelgy, or at Mike Kent Draws. Yeah. Um, all of these things are in the annotation below. Yeah. Um, and for the art analysis, that'd be YouTube only. That so because yes. we that's because we would like to give you visual aid. We've done some breakdowns on the podcast before, which just sounds like us trying to describe everything. A yeah, belt and a buckle. Yeah, and then there's a, there's the scale arm. Like it'd be you know we we realized that it would be a lot better if you could uh, have some visual aid. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that would be a YouTube only thing. These are analysis is analysis analysis is whenever they go up though we will announce them on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll be doing more spoiler casts this year, more reviews in general. Yeah. Our uh, spoiler casts are our reviews. It's kind of just what we think of the thing as a whole. Yeah. Um, and we're going to try to do it for every big tentpole movie this year. We're definitely going to 100% do every superhero movie, which is like two or three a year, so that's not so hard. Yeah, well, I mean, the, like next year we're going to have fucking Thor, Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man. That's already three. Spider-Man. Um, yeah, so there's been quite a few. Yeah. We're definitely going to do this for those, but we also, you know, we want to do one on John Wick 2. We want to do yeah. one on Kong Skull Island. Yeah. So, we're going to try and do some more of those, because uh, th- those seem to get, like, good reactions most yeah. of the time, so. People seem to like our spoiler casts, um, you know, and again, also with our spoiler casts, there's certain content that we haven't covered inside of them, so if you're a fan of the spoiler casts, you know, let us know what kind of opinions uh, and what kind of information you want us to hit on. What? Yeah, is there something we're not yeah. touching on as much? Like, do you want us to talk about the cinematogra- cinematography more? Yeah, storyboarding. The art. Like, I mean, we we are artists. We don't mind talking about, or don't mind, we love talking about the art in movies and stuff. You know, just a lot of the time we get carried away with what we want to talk about. But if you have something specific that you want to hear about from us, then just let us know again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mike threw a horror cast out there. Yeah. I'm a big horror fan. Mike's becoming a bigger horror fan due to the constant exposure from me. Um, <laughs> I'm actually starting to draw more horror, strangely enough, because of you. Yes. Watching at your stuff and like drawing yes. things. Like, And then when I drew that Venom, I was like, ah! And it was kind of like, yeah, yeah I was looking at all these... It's gross cathartic. Things. You got to draw all these fucking teeth and slime and <laughs> shit and rib cages. That's fucking dope. Um, I don't know what a horror cast would be necessarily, but um, that could also just mean that we're reviewing big horror movies alongside the big temples, you know? Yeah, I think as a horror cast, though, we can cover a whole uh, plethora of uh, content. So, uh, go over old horror books that we maybe liked. Mm-hmm. Even um, uh, there's lots of uh, great uh, like radio broadcasts and things like that. You know, like even going to classics of War of the Worlds, two current ones. Um, and, Actually, Mike. And then we did the really great thing with the uh, uh, elevator to hell. Elevator. 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 We didn't talk about that on on Mike though. We didn't? No. No, that was not on my oh. <laughs> No, that was all just oh. in between discussion. So, that's what I mean. We, we actually, for some reason, turned on the uh, silly game show Hellivator and ended up deciding that we could design better um, uh, haunted houses, haunted houses basically. Them. We could do something like that. Um, so, I, I think that's actually kind of a fun idea to do in general, and that would be either a segment that we can do on particular podcasts or a separate podcast. Again, I think a segment would probably be best. Yeah. Um, but again, let us know what you think. Um and finally, some of you might be happy about this. We hope to return the Hunter Hunter cast. <laughs> Actually, a lot of you some extremely point, are popular thing. It is definitely our most listened to episode ever. Yeah. Was the uh, the Hunter casts? Yeah. So there's an audience out there for them. Uh, we know you love Hunter. We love Hunter too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're dying to see it come back. Mm-hmm. Literally, no word on it. Yeah. We, we 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 had a brief bit of news there yeah. a couple weeks ago, but uh, I'm excited for that to come back, and we will continue that podcast yeah. when we can. Um, what about, uh, would you play around with the idea of, an, like, an anime review thing, or... Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be down for that. Yeah. If that's something, again, you guys want to hear, I mean, 
we're more picky with our shows than most. Yeah, well, especially me. I feel like you watch a little more anime than I do, so... I stopped watching entirely. Okay, so he's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I watched uh, My Hero Academia last year. Yeah. One Punch Man, obviously. It was yeah. great. Um, or if you even well, you know, Attack on Titan Season 2 is coming out. Mm, that could be a good thing yeah. if you want to do some uh, talks around that. And there's a live action for uh, fucking Death Note. Who never knows when that's going to come out, but, you know. So... You know, again, it's something we can do, and if it's an interest to you guys, then we're more than happy to do it. Absolutely. And we would also love to do more listener mail. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have, you know, questions, comments, concerns, you want to re read your fan fiction at us, um, we, again, we want to hear from you at meetpensandpixels at gmail.com. Uh, and we, because we'd love to do a more regular listener mail segment, we mm -hmm. just don't get enough right now. Um, so. Of course, we don't get any good questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. Um, and so that would be great to hear from you guys more so we can, you know, do the. You know, uh, if we don't have a topic that week, we could do listener mail instead in lieu of that, you know? I'm totally down with that. Yeah, because the other, we did, what, two or three listener mails last year? Two or three, yeah. Yeah, and they were good, and they were, they were a lot of fun. Because it's always, like, the unexpected is fun, too, because yeah. I didn't know what the questions were beforehand. It's yeah, like, oh, we, we always kind of dissolve off of those two, which was a little bit interesting. Plus, you guys asked some really neat questions. Um, and, yeah, just hearing more from you guys in general would be great, and we, we do get a little bit right now. Um, but we encourage you to do more because we want to improve this and start pushing it to the next uh, level. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so as we're as we're closing out this year, um, I guess we're not actually. I guess we have one more podcast before we stop. We're gonna send them in all on the listeners and say like thank you. Well, when they come out time. after the first? No, it's coming out this Monday. No, I know, but the next one would come out after the first. So this is the last one of the year. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. You're getting fucking reactions in real time, people. You are. Oh, it just, would. Yeah, yeah, it would. Okay, this is the last one of the year. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just like just listening to us babble about like, the stuff we love. Yeah. It's a lot of fun for us. Um, we hope it's a lot of fun for you. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, I mean, have a good year, guys. Or have a good New Year's, New good, good Christmas, Merry Christmas, all the other holidays that are included under that list. Happy dreidel. Spinning. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just spin dreidels, don't they? <laughs> I don't even know why this is funny. Just not, well, not what they do. Because you're being like racist, but you don't even know it. That's why it's funny. What? Yeah, it's... Wouldn't that be like saying, have, have fun putting up your Christmas tree? Isn't that the same thing? It's a menorah with the candles. That's the, yeah, yeah. That's the Hanukkah thing. Where, where are the dreidels coming? Uh. I don't know. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. If you wonder what my life is like. It's just this. It's just this <laughs> off mic constantly. <laughs>